All right, cool. I think we're recording. All right, so uh, for a stop loss, the best way to place a stop loss is not necessarily by how many pips you're willing to lose, but by previous market structure, okay? So for example, if we're taking the same example of uh, we're selling right here at the major key level, let's say we sell at that, bro at that breakout, all right? What you're going to do is you're going to place your stop loss according to what previous market structure is. So you have to look into the past to determine where you're going to be putting your stop loss. So previous market structure is just a level that is visibly seen on the charts to be a heavy level of support or a heavy level of resistance. So for example, if you guys can see my screen, you see this little white line I just drew. This is a very big level of resistance at this point. So this is the previous market structure. So if you were to place a stop loss, I would recommend placing it anywhere above this white line. You know what I'm saying? So even if you, even if, yeah, so if you can't afford a certain amount of pips, right, and the stop loss requires you to take, uh, let's say this is like 97 pips right now, 98 pips. If you guys can't handle that many pips of a stop loss, then you either, one, want to find a better entry, or two, look for another move, okay? Oh, let me see something on the chat. I got to drive. Oh, I got you, Lorenzo. Come on, dog. But, yeah, so um, what's it called? So the, the stop loss has to be placed above previous market structure in cells, okay? And your stop loss should be placed below previous market structure if you're looking for buys. So, for example, if I were to take a buy down here, right, we'll place it at the break of uh, previous structure, is right here. Let's draw the line. All right, somewhere in this area. So, you want to put your stop loss when you're looking for buys below previous market structure. And if you're looking for sales, you're going to put it above previous market structure. Um, Let's see. And then I don't know if you guys were on the Zoom that we covered market patterns, but specifically we cover how to use stop losses in, in terms of market patterns. So if you guys haven't uh, seen that video yet, we've uploaded it to YouTube, right, Jesse? We did? Uh, yes. Market patterns video. Okay. So you guys should be able to refer to that one and then you'll be able to see how to place your stop loss on, on certain market patterns, like a double top, a head and shoulders and stuff like that. These are very useful techniques so you don't get unnecessarily stopped out. There's stop loss hunts happening all the time. You know what I'm saying? Certain wicks, like these wicks right here, it's for anybody that has sold up here, right? And it's looking to get out of their stop loss that have already broken even. So that's why you always got to make sure to what previous market structure is telling you and always avoid that. Um, any questions about stop loss? I feel like I basically covered a good amount besides what Jesse said. I like that. That was good. Did anybody see what, it, did you guys need another physical visualization of where to put a stop loss? Anybody want another visual stop losses? No? Everybody got it? So everybody, everybody's a stop loss wizard now? Clear explanation? All right, cool, cool. All right, cool. So I don't want to hear anybody getting stop loss onto this up upcoming week then since you guys already know previous market structure, right? Yeah, better not. For real, for real. No, trust me, even with previous market structure, I got I get stopped out, okay? So it's not a perfect science, but it will help you. Can you have one more? Yeah, I got you, Darius. All right, so I'm going to go a little bit more into the past. So I'm not using the same example. All right, perfect, right here. So let's say we took a short position, okay? That means we're selling. When someone says short, how far should you go? Um, oh, how far back in the past? Uh, you don't have to go back to like 1995 in order to determine your stop loss for 2018. But no, I'm not trying to be funny because some people that ask go like really, really far back. So you should generally be on like a daily time frame, weekly, four hour time frame, somewhere around there in order to be able to get a pretty good stop loss because on the one hour and anything less than that is usually a lot of fake out moves. So if you're looking at a one hour market structure, you're likely to uh, more than likely to get stopped out than opposed to looking at a market structure on the daily. You know what I'm saying? And maybe more pips, obviously, for a stop loss if you're looking at stuff on the daily since it is a bigger time frame and therefore the candles will be bigger, the movements will be bigger. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to uh, identify. So, for example, let's say we placed a trade here, a sell here. Yes, we're, in, we're like the market structure cannot be the top of these wicks because this is currently where the market structure is. So if we're looking at market structure in this little section right here, which I will actually highlight with a circle so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so this little section right here, if you're looking for previous market structure of this, you got to go to the previous high or the previous low. So if we're looking for buys, this is the area that we're looking at, okay, down here. Let me change the color of my circle. Actually, I'll put a rectangle. Okay, this is the previous market structure if you're looking for buys. 
and this would be the previous market structure for looking for sales somewhere in this area so if we were to place a stop like right if we were to place a short in here then we'd look at previous market structure up here and try to put our stop loss up there and our take profit uh, well take profit to determining on a whole bunch of other things I'm only going to cover the stop loss right now but so ultimately if we were to take a short here right this is what we're looking at for previous market structure Karim welcome bro so we go over here right above previous market structure for a short and then I'm gonna go in for a long right now. Let's say, I mean, I don't know why you would take a long right now. This is just an example. <laughs> no, and then this little section right here looks horrible, so I wouldn't have bought anything over here. But this is the previous market structure over here, so I would place my stop loss somewhere below here if you were going in for a buy. And as you see right now, because it's ultimately downtrending, you kind of went against the trend, and you would have gotten stopped out regardless of whether you put it in structure or not. Getting ready for the week. Oh, hell yeah, we're definitely all getting ready for the week. I'm just uh, covering some stop loss, how to avoid hunts. You know what I'm saying, dog? So um, was that a better visual representation now that I drew like the boxes and the circle that which you're going to be taking an entry at, for example? Did everybody cover it? Did everybody get that? Darius, was that a little bit more helpful? Oh, snap. Let me know. Let me know. Hopefully that was a little bit better for you. Yes, should your stop loss even risk more than your take profit or is that up to the trader? Okay, so um, personally, my risk to reward ratio, I always want to go for double. Like I want to win double is what I'm willing to lose. So for example, if, uh, well, this is just my personal risk to reward ratio, right? So if I was going in for a short here and I was willing to risk about, you know, what is that, 93 pips? Then I would be looking to gain probably like anywhere above a hundred because uh, that would be a one to one ratio, and that still kind of make me a little bit iffy. I'm not really big on one to one. My personal ratio I try to go for is two to one. So if you guys don't know on TradingView, there's actually two useful tools. It's called long position and short position. Okay, when you click short, that's when you're going in for a sell. When you click long position, that means you're going in for a buy, and you can physically draw it out, and you'll have these nice little uh, red and green boxes that show you where you're going to be showing your take profit and your red box shows you where your stop loss is. So you can drag it out uh, physically and have the, the pip take profit be however you're comfortable with. But um, essentially there's other tools and techniques you wanna be able to use in order to use a take profit. So Fibonacci would be a good tool in order to get take profits. But essentially the risk to reward ratio is up to the trader. And I personally aim for like a two to one scenario. So like I said, if I'm risking 93, I'm gonna try to go for you know maybe 180, uh, maybe 200. But me personally, I'm a swing trader. So if I see something leaving this quarter level and I sold here, the next take profit for me is 250 pips away usually. So I'm taking it somewhere around here. So even then, if my stop loss requires 93 and I'm aiming for 250, you can see my ratio is 2.66. What about you, Jesse? What's your, what's your personal risk to reward? No, I would definitely recommend the same thing. Um, if you're definitely going to have a stop loss, for me, like I said, I trade when I usually see a setup. But if I see a setup and I feel like I'm going to risk like, if I have like a one to one, I'm trying to catch fifty pips when the stop loss is fifty. That's something I really got to depend. Like I really got to think about. Um, but for the most part, yeah. If you're trying to shoot for hundred or fifty pips, I'd usually try to see a setup that'll give me about like half of the amount of a set, or I mean half the amount of a stop. You know. <laughs> Did everybody get that? Your stop should be about half your take profit. Your stop should be about half your take profit, and. Um, even then, because remember, you want to put your stop loss according to previous market structure. So if it's a certain amount of pips you guys need to need to catch, unfortunately, some moves that you should not be able to that you should not have to take because you realize that your your account can't manage that amount of risk. Either that, or you're gonna have to learn to be comfortable with drawdown. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to learn to get comfortable with the fact that your stop losses will hit. You have to enter every trade thinking that you're already gonna lose them. Okay? There's not gonna be any disappointments if you have no expectations. I'm not saying to be negative. You know what I'm saying? You might think that you're going to win. You have to be confident in your trade, of course, but you have to expect that you're willing to lose it, okay? So just keep that in mind whenever you're entering any type of trade, that you have to be, like, unbreakable, okay? Like, your, your, your stop loss getting hit is not going to make or break your account. Unless, of course, you're just kind of low, over leveraging and, you know, that goes into <laughs> That'll blow your account easily. That'll blow your account easily. So if you guys haven't used it by now, there's an Excel spreadsheet that we've been uh, sharing with the people that you've been able to calculate your position size, but if not, I'm gonna actually drop a Forex calculator that should help a lot. It's on my FX book. When you guys become a little bit more professional traders, this is an account that you guys will be opening up so you guys can show 
other professional traders your results verified of course and this right here this page that I'm gonna share with you on the chat box will show you a whole bunch of Forex calculators it'll show you a Fibonacci calculator it'll show you how to calculate your margin it'll show you how to calculate your pips it'll show you how to catch a pivot point and it'll also show you how to measure a perfect position size so if you guys haven't done so already, it's in the chat box. That's the link. Pretty good Forex calculator to send out for you guys. A little, little bit of nug for hopping on the Zoom on your beautiful Sunday. Um, okay, so hold on. I just saw another chat there. All right, so I heard when you're scalping, your stop loss is bigger than your take profit. Is it true? And if yes, why? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, so, I don't like to scalp anymore. <laughs> I think, yeah, this is low key why I don't like to scalp anymore. Okay, so uh, Jesse, would you want to answer that one or? Yes, I would love to. So for all of you scalpers out there, okay, I know many of you have asked me about scalping and if I do it and whatnot. I mean, I know how. Um, the one thing I would say about scalping is the one thing I don't like about it is that you have to have a bigger risk than your reward, right? So on average, let's say from the are ten pips and dip, your average stock stop loss is usually 25 pips and the only reason why is because if you're trying to go for a solid 10 pips sometimes you need to let the market breathe right so if you like zoom into like, some, like a smaller time frame like on the 15 minute chart you need to remember we're looking at like the four hour right here you know on the 15 minute chart if you're trying to shoot for an average 10 pips you might have to deal with a lot of pullback you know you might have to deal with some consolidation um so for the most part whenever you're going to try to scalp uh, yeah you'd have to have a, a higher stop loss um that's up to you at the end of the day but just keep that in mind um that's why i don't really scalp as much um yeah that's my one sense about scalping i'm not saying it's not easy i mean it, it is pretty easy once you get the hang of it but it's a lot more risk and i'd rather not risk that much absolutely so for example like he said if you're using if you're aiming for like a 10 pip and dip type of scenario that we've that we've learned or if you want to go for even a 25 pip move Okay, so generally even people will tell you a minimum of 25 pips for a stop loss. So we're on the 15 minute chart right now, and as you can see right here, I got a 25 pip stop loss and a 10 pip gain. Does that green to red look like a good ratio to you guys? Like me personally, a 0 0.4 ratio is not, I don't really want to enter that trade to be real. I don't care what my lot size is. Like it would have to be like a super crystal clear setup saying, yeah, for sure I want to scalp. But um, so most of the time it is, it is true. Some people are even savage enough to, to not even put a stop loss when they're trying to scalp. So it's really personally up to you. That's what's known as risk appetite. So definitely you want to learn what your risk appetite is, okay? If you got to go back to demo so you can understand where you feel comfortable taking losses according to lot size and stuff like that, then you know what? So, so be it. Go back. Still holding EU. Oh, we still will be holding the EU all along, we, all, all week long. Hey, I, I'm, I'm in I don't there. know that one. I, I, <laughs> I see it. I'm in there. I'm in there. But so, for example, like he said, 15-minute chart, if we're going in for, for a trade, right, you can still use market structure over here. This would have been 15 pips, and then you can go for a quick 10, and that would also be market structure. This could technically be a valid trade, or even to the upside, still would work, but it just depends on how comfortable you are, personally. Um, let me see, what else did we cover? Let's see, that was a, that was a stop loss. Is everybody good on stop losses there? Yeah. All right, cool. I see thumbs up. I see some faces of confidence. How to use the DXY. How to use the DXY. Okay, so that's what we're going on right now. And then how to go from higher time frames to smaller one for a good entry. All right, bet, bet, bet. Okay, so we're going to go to the DXY. All right. Uh, first and foremost, the DXY is the U.S. dollar currency index. Okay? DXY bullish. Back. Yeah. Karim knows. Karim has been breaking it down for us in the chat, always showing us mad love and shit like that. Shout out to Karim. Um, but the DXY is the physical representation of what the US dollar is basically doing by itself. Okay. This is literally the chart for the USD by itself. So if you guys understand the direction of the DXY ultimately, okay, you'll be able to get a good idea of what US dollar pairs are going to be doing. So for example, I'll put it right here in the text. So when DXY is bullish, all right. We're gonna get pairs such as Euro USD, Euro USD, right? Will be bearish. All right, and if DXY is bearish, we're gonna get pairs like USD, JPY to be. Oh no, sorry. What am I saying? DXY bearish. 
cares? I'm tripping. Bullish. No, oh, it's my bullish. All right, sorry, I'm I'm out here right now. My my head and shoulders are all four. We'll we'll get to it now. Okay, DXY bullish. Dollars going up. You know, dropping. DXY. Oh, that's why. Sorry, Euro USD will be bearish. Bullish. You can tell I just woke up. Let me let me live. <laughs> uh, USD. All right, perfect. Got it. So this is the, the right terminology, okay? So when the DXY is bullish, right? When the DXY is going up, pairs that are, that are in front, right? I put the XXX to represent like you can replace it. Okay, so Euro USD, NZD USD, AUD USD, GVP USD. These pairs are gonna be examples of the pairs that are gonna be bearish. And the reason why, bro, that's huge. Exactly, mad, mad, mad facts right here. So the, the reason why is because the DXY represents the dollar, correct? So if we have Euro USD and the dollar is going up, all right, then we probably have the Euro going down. That's usually how that works. Because the, the DXY is what's known as negatively correlated to the euro us dollar when something is negatively correlated i don't know if you guys saw my correlation facts from yesterday when something is negatively correlated that means they go the opposite direction okay so for example the dxy goes up euro usd goes down they have a negative correlation they go the opposite way if if for example the dxy and usd jpy right now those are a positive correlation so what that would mean is that if we have usd JPY, this is a positive correlation, aka they go the same way, then and the dollar is going up, right? That means JPY has to be going down. So this is when the DXY is bullish. All right, which is currently right now. Most of the most of the heavy hitters in the GOATS chat, if you guys haven't seen it already, we'll cover how to read their charts basically. But they've basically all said the DXY is bullish, primarily because of this trend line right here, this daily trend line, this white one that I have drawn out. Okay, this is my daily trend line. I drew it here from the start of the this series spike and uptrend. All right, we have one point right here. Validates our trend line. Another point right here. Validates our trend line. Another point right here. Validates our trend. The more points that it touches the trend line, guys, the more accurate your trend line is. Oh, Jesse, feel free to add anything if you got anything, bro. Um, I will take that into consideration. <laughs> what the DXY? You don't, you don't, you don't mark up uh, indexes. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really have anything to add. Oh. All right. Is everybody is everybody getting this right now? Everybody's understanding what I'm saying about the DXY and, and negative correlation, positive correlation. This kind of works for everything with the USD, okay? So there are actually multiple indexes. The strongest index that we do pay attention to is the dollar index. Of course, you guys know that the dollar is the most traded pair. Does the DXY have major reversals often? Um, I'm not going to lie. I've never back tested the whole DXY. I just kind of use it to see what's currently happening to the dollar. Could you please cover how to use the harmonics? <laughs> I'm not going to entertain that right now. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my God. That's great stuff. Okay. I'll show you how to be your own harmonic scanner. How about that? Yeah, we'll, we'll show you how to chart harmonics. How about that? Yeah, we'll show you how to cover your how to find your own harmonic scanner. How about that? Much better. I have honestly know what PPA means, but I'm a sorry it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Gold short, my mans. Possibly. I haven't even gotten onto gold yet, so we'll find out when we get there, right? I think that's weird because Kareem used to train me on the harmonic. Kareem used to train you on the harmonic? Yeah. No way, like back in like freaking April or something like that. Yeah. Hell yeah, probably. He's funny. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, I'll expose myself. 
All right, could you go over what you wrote down about EURUSD and USDJPY real quick? Okay, yeah, sure. All right, so for example, this is DXY bullish. All right, so this is, this is what we're breaking down right now. So if you guys haven't noticed right now in the pin post on the goat chat, or uh, I'll make sure to retype it in the baby pips post if you guys haven't been able to get into the goat chat, we're currently capped out at 115. Um, but so basically what everyone's saying on their DXY, their US dollar index is that they're saying it's bullish. Okay, bullish means it's uptrending. All right, so if we see that it's uptrending, the dollar should be gaining strength. And if we read what I said over here about the notes DXY being bullish, we have pairs with USD being in the back, right? It did being the, the, the quote, the quote versus the base pair. The base pair, right? Uh, the second currency out of the list, then it will be bearish, all right? It means it'll, it's going down. So for this example right here, we have the Euro USD. Euro USD is actually one of the biggest correlated pairs for the DXY. <laughs> um, so we have the, um, the Euro USD is the opposite way of the DXY, if the DXY is going up, like I said, that means the dollar is going up, and therefore the euro should be going down, okay? And if the DXY is still bullish, then that means the pairs with the USD in the front, right? The quote per currency will be going up, and the base currency should be going down, such as USD JPY. So this right here, like I said, DXY bullish means this is going up, this is going down. And one thing, guys, that you could use too is market patterns. So if you're to zoom in, like on the one or something like that last week when the euro was decided to go up like it did before one way that i actually figured out on how i uh, do the four hour chart. oh yeah right there the one hour that one's beautiful the one the four doesn't matter okay the two is perfect but um the one way that i knew that the euro was going to go up in price was because of that head and shoulder right there so last week on sunday when i was looking at my chart i started up looking at the dxy and what I noticed was that that head and shoulders right there indicated that there was going to be a reversal with the dollar. I figured that the dollar was going to go down in price. If you noticed, what did it do? It did, right? So that's one thing that I usually look at too. I look at market patterns with the DXY. It makes it a lot easier for me too, um, aside from the quarter key levels and everything too. So it just makes it a lot simpler when you're trying to figure out where the dollar is going in general because the majority of the Forex market is predominantly the dollar. You know, so if you know where the dollar is going, you can tell where the majority of the other pairs are going. Um, that's why I look at the dollar or the DXY like severely. That's how I base a lot of my trades, to be honest. Facts. I'm, I, I, try, I primarily trade the US dollar. I like my, my favorite pairs are AUD USD, Euro USD. So you, looking at the dollar index is very, very helpful. If you guys trade USD pairs, this is going to be one of your best friends. And like how you said, me and him saw this head and shoulders as it was forming. We were actually on a zoom when the right shoulder was being made. So we were preparing for those, for those longs on the USD. We were, I mean, for the shorts on the Euro, on um, the USD and uh, the longs on like Euro and stuff like that. That's how we knew that a reversal was coming. That inverse head and shoulders though. Where do you see the inverse? Oh, right there. This one? No, no, no. To the right. The one that's forming? No, it's a little bit to the left. I mean, it kind of broke through. I didn't respect it, but. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah and then there's also a gap which needs to be corrected by the way if you guys don't know about gaps right there's a space if you see space between bodies of candles such as here to here gaps need to be corrected okay there's no open space in forex so even though you know this happened right here ultimately you should expect there there has to be a, a body of a candle that tries to get into this area and close that area all right so that's what happens over here these candles right here are just to fill out the gap if it continues to go up it's because it needed to fill the gap. It did so already and is on its way back up. All right, so keep that in mind if you guys ever see a gap. Uh, you don't have to be an expert to trade gaps. You just have to be a little bit more experienced and be comfortable with, you know, drawdown and and possible, possible like, you know, really long-term type situations. There's some gaps that don't get corrected immediately. But, yeah, so market structures, um, exactly like Jesse said, head and shoulders, very useful technique. We got this um, channel right here. Also useful to see that it was going to break out even further below. Let's see what else we can cover. Um, so the DXY, let me see. Oh, okay, so how to go in from higher time frames into lower ones. All right, so right now we're on the daily. All right, so I don't know where you guys mark up generally. Um, I start marking up usually on the weekly and the daily. And then I kind of work my way in and I look for entries, EJ sell off big time. I like how Karim is low-key like looking at uh, charts on the side too. So we can, we, can go see, we can go see what he's looking at. He's giving us a selection. I love it. So Karim, go, your favorite pair. Yeah, for real. What is your favorite pair, bro? I'd love to know. 
So, um, so we go on the daily, right? You want to draw trend lines on the weekly, the daily. Those are the strongest trend lines you could possibly get. All right, you know what I'm saying? When stuff breaks through trend lines, and you want to see, <laughs> I'm not buying or selling that pair. I don't trade that pair. Um, I don't trade it either. <laughs> so when you guys are looking on the daily and on the weekly, you guys want to draw your trend lines. You guys want to draw your market structures. Uh, you know what I'm saying? These little blue boxes are like uh, supply and demand zones. If you guys don't know what that is or major reversal areas, you guys should definitely learn what that is. Um, look at market patterns, right? If you see like a double bottom, a double top, these are all usually indications of reversals and stuff like that. So just keep an eye out for the dollar and you're going to go out for the, on the weekly and the daily first, right? Draw your trend lines. Then you go on the four hour, get a good visual representation of what's going on over here. If you guys don't know how to do so already, one of the main indicators that me and some of the other bigger bosses use that I know is reading candlesticks. I know you guys like, they don't, we don't have a nice pretty video for how to read candlesticks quite yet. Uh, trust me, we're working on it in the academies that we got planned out. But for now, guys, um, a bunch of uh, PDFs that I have and stuff. Moves Just, too fast and pits daily with a lot of volatility. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're gonna send a couple PDFs in the in the baby pit yeah. show. Yeah, or yeah, if you can send them right now, that'd be cool too. So we're gonna send a couple PDFs in re in, re in regards to how to read candlesticks. Because some of these things, these candlestick readings are very, very useful to spot reversals, okay? To spot, you know, uh, continuations. A lot of patterns go on in candlesticks that you guys need to learn. And the app, yes, if you guys haven't downloaded the app already by now. JCP, Japanese Candle Patterns, all right? Download that app. They have a nice little game on there. It's with a simulator, and it allows you to test your knowledge of your of your candlestick readings so definitely download that app all right so after you're done on the daily four hour weekly you got your chart all marked up you're gonna go in for that one hour for like entry so for example this is the DXY you can't well you can trade the indexes but we're not we're not actually talking about having to trade the DXY but for example since we're looking for longs right or, or looking for buys if you guys don't know what a long is repeat the name of the app JCP Japanese candle patterns not JC Penny, Japanese candle patterns. So we're looking for pullbacks on the one hour, okay? So if so for example, if we're going in an uptrend, can you guys tell me which direction a pullback would happen? If we're looking for an uptrend, which direction does a pullback happen? Okay, okay. Everybody paying attention? I like that. I like that. Yes, exactly. So if we're looking for an uptrend, it's got to pull back down before it goes back up. So for example, if we would have saw this happening, pull back down, then my arrow shows that it's going up. All right. Perfect. Do you recommend looking at a chart in a bigger time frame for looking for entries at intraday trade? Yes, exactly. Jesse answered perfectly. I recommend no matter what time frame you're on, even if you're scalping, to know the overall trend on bigger time frames. Because ultimately, if you do decide to take your scalp for a longer period of time or you decide to take your intraday trade for a longer period of time you should be able to know the overall trend you want to trade with it so if the trend on the weekly is down and you're on you're scalping for for buys i i mean i wouldn't recommend it you could do it if you're comfortable with it but i would rather scalp a short and then possibly turn it into an intraday trade or a swing trade do you trade on sundays or wait till monday um honestly i realized that with more experience jesse will say it best jesse what's our sentence for when we take trades Oh, does anybody no, I think everybody knows. When does Jesse trade? Because everybody stays asking me when we trade. There's not a specific day. Everybody anybody type in chat if I really know how I trade. Anybody know when we take trades? Me and Jesse. There we go. There we go. We, us. we trade them as a setup, you know, because not every single day, like today, like I've been looking up uh, for a bunch of setups and you know, maybe there isn't anything crystal clear right now, you know. So I wouldn't really want to look or, or trade anything at the moment. I don't want to force a trade. I'd rather wait for the one day that there's like a really, really solid trade and go all in with that trade, you know? Um, depends on how your guys' style is, but I honestly need to trade and I see a setup. It doesn't matter if it's a market pattern. It doesn't matter if it's, um, if it, I don't know, respects a level of support and resistance. If you see anything, as, as long as you see something, something crystal clear, if you can give me a lot of solid reasons to why you're taking that trade, then you've got a pretty good trade in your hands, you know? Exactly, exactly. So we don't necessarily trade on any specific day. There so happens to be a crystal clear setup on a Sunday, you're damn right we're going to take it because we take the trades that we're one confident in and two, we see crystal clear setups, okay? So even though there are a lot of fake outs on Sunday, people will tell you to avoid Sundays, people will tell you to avoid Fridays, don't trade at freaking Wednesday at 5 p.m. because uh, spreads go up higher. 
honestly, I really don't care. When you really get into the whole gist of it all, like you trade when you see something that presents the crystal clear setup to you, okay? If you have a confirmation checklist, which everybody should have by now, you guys are like at least intermediate, okay? So everyone should have a crystal clear uh, setup with their confirmation checklist in order to be able to get a good trade. So if you guys haven't gotten one by now, I'll give you a little prime example one, just a little one, uh, one, two, que one, two, three, um, trend lines, um, supply and demand, um, market patterns, candle patterns, time frame correlation. All right, so this is like a good example, I guess, of like a little beginner's checklist of, uh, of a good confirmation checklist that you would take a trade, right? You want your trend lines to be respected or disrespected, depending on what, you, what you're looking for, okay? If you're looking for a breakout of a trend line, then go for it. All right, you want to look at supply and demand zones. These boxes right here, or major reversal areas is also what they're known as, okay? You want to look at market patterns, such as this head and shoulders, okay? You want to look at candlestick patterns, such as, let me see if I can find a good candlestick pattern right here. Jesse, what candle is this? Is that a hammer or that, hanging, whatever the fuck they call it? No, you know it. This is like one of your favorite ones. You're always talking about this one. The doji? Well, a type of doji. You know, you know. Come on. I mean, doji. It's a star. It's a type of star. Do you know the star? Oh, um, is it a fucking shooting star or whatever? There we go. Yeah, shooting star, doji, iPhone. Hey, Isabel, welcome. All right, so yeah, so there's a there's a shooting star doji followed by what's known as a bearish engulfing. These two in combination indicates. The shoot down. There he goes. What did it do? The shoot down was real. All right, so these little candlestick pattern right here, these little two candles, just showed you further bearish momentum in this little point. Okay, Karim knows. Karim, Karim's always. Uh, if he's still on here anyway, he's always reading candlesticks. He's always talking about Marabozu. Marabozu is a very strong candlestick that you learn how to read once you guys get the hang of it and you guys will be able to see what that's going to be telling you on these charts. It's a little bit more advanced, but... It's a little bit more advanced than that, to be honest. The ones that I posted on the chat, um, there are a lot of these basic patterns that we were just going over. When you can find multiple of them, multiple of them in conjunction, it makes it a lot better. Um, and then I also put the confirmation checklist on the chat for all of you guys. I just put different things that you could look at, you know, that you don't have to like have every single thing on your checklist done. You just want multiple reasons. Yes, exactly. It's you been going to down too like long. So it has to go up. <laughs> Some people have a checklist of like 10 things. No, but look, so, so we only got like five things on this checklist. If you got like four or five, that's a pretty good performance. Guys, like take the trade. If you guys see all four of those things line up. So just keep, yeah, like exactly how Karim said too, let the candlestick speak to you. And if you guys don't know, you know what I'm saying, Wix, Wix tell you a story too. So just keep that in mind when you guys are being able to trade stuff. So um, let me see, we were supposed to do time frame analysis. So for example, if we were to get in on a short, right? And we looked at the DXY, we saw that candlestick pattern along with the fact that, uh, let's show you trend lines, right? Is the trend, overall trend, the time frame on the time frames on like, the two hour, the four hour, this right here, this little section shows that it was downtrending. So like that right there is another confirmation on your checklist saying that the dollar is going to be going down at this point. You see candlestick patterns, another confirmation on your checklist saying the dollar is going to go down at this point. A head and shoulders, another thing on your checklist that says the dollar is going to go down at this point. So look how we just got like three or four things back to back to back hitting off on our checklist and now we're looking for shorts. Broke support. Yeah. Yeah. Broke support, exactly. Broke previous market structure. History in the market always repeats itself. Big facts. Some currencies prefer one uh, type of market pattern over another too. So if you notice that like, you know, USDJPY likes double tops and double bottoms. That's something that's actually reoccurring. Go back and back test, right? Go into the past of your favorite currencies and see what it's told you before. Can indicators be used too for the checklist? Absolutely. So for example, yeah. this is my, yeah. yeah, most definitely. So the last thing that I always do on my curf on my personal checklist, is that I, I read the candlesticks and all that stuff first. I try to get rid of all the indicators. And then when I get all the checklists done, I add my indicators later and see if that adds to my 
my analysis. So for example, this right here, I use the uh, moving average theory. If you guys don't know what the moving averages are, okay. Um, we got EMA and SMA. Um, and I have them, whenever they cross over, they show me reversals. And I have red above blue showing uh, buys and blue above red showing shorts. Marabozu is a long candle without any wicks, right? Uh, yes, Marabozu is long candles with like almost no wicks. Um, so for example, we were to go in on the daily, right? We are all looking, like I said, we're looking for buys. So we're looking for a pullback. We go on the one hour again, we come back and look. So it happens to be that this is the pullback that we're looking for. It's being supported by the minor key. Uh, Karim has mentioned that 95, besides it being a minor key level, if you're, if you're a fan, uh, fan of quarters theory, is also a big psychological zone, all right? So just keep that in mind. This will be a strong level of support. If it fails to break it, then the dollar being bullish is further confirmed, right? And when you're looking for candle stuff patterns, guys, you kind of want to look on the four hour and the daily. Those are stronger candles. They, they give you a bigger confirmation. So usually when I see a breakout, right? I don't really trade breakouts for candlestick patterns on the one hour. I kind of wait for a four hour representation. So if we're looking for longs right here, I want to wait for a nice candle saying that we're breaking out of this little, this little area. But these candles not being broken on the major minor key level, it's also super strong. What's the psychological zone? Okay, so these are uh, areas that the banks and so, you know retail traders are like very um, aware of. Like they're they're very they pay attention to this numbers very very strongly. So the reason why the quarters theory works so well for me is because quarters work as very big psychological zones for the banks. The banks don't really care about micro pips. The banks don't really care about tens of pips. The banks don't even really care about hundreds of pips. They care for like thousand pip moves type of things. Okay. So the reason why the quarters theory is so cool to me is because you get to see what the banks are generally seeing and they get rid of all the, the, the micro pips and stuff like that. And um, it kind of shows that like in the 95 flat area, most people would rather pay attention to you when you're talking about whole dollars than they would if I'm saying, oh, I'm going to give you a raise by like 50 cents. You'd be, you'd be more attentive. I would tell you, I'm going to raise your, your thing by a dollar, correct? You'd rather whole dollars than, than cents. That's just same thing works for banks. The banks know how you work, your brain works, right? They see that they don't, that, oh, okay, these retail traders don't care about micro pips. They don't care about the little stuff. They, they want the bigger moves. They want to be on our caliber. So let's look at this zone, right? The 95 zone, for example, is a minor key. And we're going to be playing around this area because we know that all the small fish will be taken out of here, right? We'll get to play around this area and let all the retail traders play around. So if you notice, there's a big area of consolidation around this key level. The main reason why is because they want to psychologically fake you out into thinking that it's going to go either or direction which is why we need to use predictive analysis and we don't really, I mean, not, I mean, reactive analysis and not predictive. Sorry. We don't predict, we don't predict what the markets are going to do. We react to what we're seeing in the markets. Um, is that, is that a good explanation of the psychological zones? I think so. You think so, Jesse? I thought he did well, guys. Everybody's getting it. Everybody's like, he likes my DX <laughs> Crystal clear. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so yes, the DXY I use for the dollar. There are under other indexes um, that you can pay attention to if you want to. I'm not gonna lie, I don't have them like marked up. I have like AXY, for example. This is the Australian index. Um, but I don't really like mark them up too too crazy because, like I said, mainly I trade DXY. So I'll be looking at US dollar pairs for this type of setups. Well, for example, if you were to trade like GJ, you're not going to look at the DXY to get a good idea of what GJ is going to be up to, okay? So you're going to be on like the BXY for the British or the JXY, for example. You got it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. Um, so that covers the DXY. Everybody has any other questions regarding the DXY specifically, or do we want to cover an actual pair now? You guys ready to get into an actual pair? Does everybody have? Yeah, we got 23 people on here. Who's just watching or who's just having the phone play in the background and listening to while they're cleaning their house? Michelle's ready to get into an actual pair. GJ Short. Hell yeah. I know GJ. GJ's Bay. Um, Brian and Brian, what's up? What, what do you mean, wait? What are we waiting for? Pat, Lucas put pear like the fruit. Oh, you put a pear like the fruit? Yeah. So you look at the DXY before anything. Honestly, I look at the DXY usually like on Sundays, like before the markets open, and I um, and I use that to see what I'm generating. For the week. 
Yeah, exactly. I use that to see what I'm generally going to be looking at for the week. But first thing I do when I come on trading view, usually, especially because I trade USD pairs, I, I come check out the DXY, see what it's going to be up to. And then I'll worry about an actual pair. But you don't want to spend your whole time on the DXY. It's not like a whole analysis you need from that as opposed to like the actual pair that you're looking at. Unless you trade it, but not a lot of people do. Unless you trade it. I don't know many. I don't actually don't know one person that trades the DXY by itself, to be honest. So. I think Kareem does. Kareem? You trade, you trade um, not Kareem, I mean Ash. Ash trade indexes? I, I believe it. Ash low-key trades everything. Ash trades everything. What the hell? I'm trying to trade everything. I don't have a broker that trades everything yet. Finally, <laughs> you care about profits and Stella's. <laughs> Man, all, <laughs> I, all I sell is pips, bro. I know. You ain't going to be getting nothing but pips from me. All right. So, for example, I'm going to go into AUD CAD, and then if anything, I'll let Jesse get the screen, and he'll cover one of his pairs. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cover a common pair. So, for example, I'm not going to cover Euro USD because, like, a lot of those are already on the group chat, for example. We'll cover what the GOATs have been putting about those main pairs, but we're going to focus on like mine and Jesse's specific pairs so that we can give you analysis that's different than what you've already seen. Agree, Jesse, or no? I agree. Okay, cool. So I'm going to cover AUD CAD really quick because it's actually one of my low-key babies. Um, since Krim already covered GJ and so did Stanley, and that low-key is my favorite pair of all of them. So, for example, AUD CAD, I see whole weekly – channel that just got broken right on um, this is on the weekly time frame this is generally where i like to operate first where i go on the month if anything too so if i see this is further confluence on the month right this goes back into the time frame analysis so if i see this monthly uh channel being a thing i see the weekly it's still a thing you know what i'm saying and it's generally respected then to me these are these are very valid confirmations that um this structure this pattern is is, is there all right so on the weekly, I do see this channel and it did get broken out of, as you see over here, this is a little fake breakout, but this is the actual breakout over here, followed by a beautiful retest. So if you didn't short up here at the beautiful retest, that's perfectly okay. Prepare for another one. At the end of the day, when stuff gets broken out, right, when a, when a market pattern is such on a bigger time frame, um, you're going to notice that the movements are going to be much, much bigger. You guys have a Telegram chat? Uh, wait, how did you get in here if we didn't get you on the Telegram? Is what I want to know. Oh, wait, I did. Put it on, I put it on my story. Andres, which Andres is this? Insta. Yes, we'll actually we'll implement you into the into the baby pip chat. I'm going to put the, the, the post. Do you want me to add? Or you can do it, yeah, because yeah. you've got the. Okay. Yeah, I'm already here, so why not? Um, add members. Is there, no, is there not an invite link on this thing? Yeah, there should be. Because it just says add. It's pinned. it's pinned. It's pinned. It's pinned? Yeah. You're right. Copy link. Boom. Here you go, brother. If you guys haven't gotten on the Telegram group chat, you guys should get on now. This is we're going to be covering some of the, the better traders' analysis from the GOAT chat. Very, very welcome, Undressed. Welcome. All right, so... On the weekly time frame, we're looking at this channel being broken, right? I'm going on to the daily as a further confluence, right? So if you see right here, this is exactly what got broken over here. And this is where I was looking for short opportunities anywhere in this area. Because even though this didn't break out and it looks like it retested, it came back into the structure. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, have traded short in this area. But this one right here, though, very, very solid, right? Especially with these two candlestick patterns, the double top on a smaller time frame for sure. You can tell by the way that it's got like a little hump going on right here. You guys can see what I'm talking about. If not, I'm going to draw it. Boom. Can you guys see the double top? You guys saw the double top right there? What does double top tell you guys? What does double top tell you? I see, oh, my bad, Lucas. I see you. I know, I know you're muted and you'd rather not type. I got you. Down, short, sell, perfect, change direction. Yeah, exactly. That's a reversal pattern. It's a double top. Usually means it was coming from an uptrend, which is it was doing this little uptrending motion, right? Double top, reverse, back down. All right? And they happen to have it a double top in that retest. All right? Those are two things that just added up an alignment. Very, very beautiful confluence. All right? So you got a market pattern, we got a retest, we got a break of structure. These are very, these are very strong indications that we're looking for a sell, right? And then another thing too. So if you guys don't know, if you guys haven't watched the market pattern video, you guys want to sell when it breaks the neckline. If you can't catch 
these wicks because you're not paying attention to the candlesticks or you're not on your chart at the time, if you can try to get the break of the neckline at this point right here, you would have still been validated, right? Even if he's old right here, you would have been good. This is the neckline. Huh. Right, this is the neckline right here. So when it broke, you could have shorted right here. Even though you didn't get the best entry, it doesn't matter. You have a market structure, you have a market pattern confluence, okay? These are very, very useful techniques. It's not all about an entry, it's all about if you're winning more than you're losing, okay? So once you do that, you're gonna, I have all my trend lines drawn out here. Um, after I broke out of the channel, I started drawing more trend lines because you know, there's a new trend, there's a new change going on. All right, and then I'm gonna go on to like the four hour chart and further align stuff up. So for example, this is a little pattern that I drew out over here. This is kind of like a uh, triangle or a channel going on right now. The price gets pressured into the zone and it has to break out either or direction. So if it broke out to the downside and we missed it, right? We look for a retest. So the way that I draw where I enter a trade instead of like the short and long position, I put little circles. I'm actually gonna delete those starting from now. I'm not gonna let people know when I enter, but that's where I entered the trade the first time because that was the retest of this structure. And I sold at this area because if I notice there's a wick here and a wick here, this is a level of supply and demand. This is a level of major resistance or a major reversal. So when I sort, when I shorted it, right, I shorted it when it entered here, the retest, and I took profit there. So even though it wasn't a 250 pip move, I did catch, you know, about 80 pips and 80 pips can make, you know what I'm saying, can help an account significantly. So I know a lot of people that struggle to catch 25 pips. So 80 pips is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Take what you guys can get. You don't have to swing such big moves. All right, so once you saw that it broke and retested, right? So this is actually a, a harmonic, right? Somebody actually asked me to, to cover how to draw this right now. All right, so if I got rid of that, would you guys even been able to have seen the, the pattern that I just drew or you guys don't have eyes for that yet? Because if you guys don't have eyes for that yet, you'll have to learn how to kind of spot that stuff kind of out. So for example, um, one of the things that I use in order to check harmonic patterns is Fibonacci retracement tools. All right, so I get my Fibonacci, I draw it from where my X would be, where the end would be at, which is about here. Okay, we got a 38.2. If you guys can't see it right here, we got a 38.2, exactly where our B point is. 38.2 is actually a pretty good ratio in order to get an X, A, uh, B pattern going on. All right, so that, that confirms that my first ratio is going to be pretty on point. Then we're going to do is going to get the Fibonacci retracement again. We're going to get it from our C to our D. Oh no, sorry. It's from B to, it's from B to C if I'm not mistaken. B to C. Am I tripping? No, in order to get a, no, it's from C to D. All right. So yeah, we're going to get it from C to D. And if B is at the 78.6 on the opposite direction, then the harmonic pattern is further validated. And if you notice right here, we got the 7.86 being at that B level. So I'm like, okay, so we got a 38.2 on the downside and we got a 7.86 on the upside. That means that it's a further confluence that my ratios should be on point, right? If you guys don't have the picture yet, I'll make sure to upload it. But there is a there is an actual picture to show you what ratios are validated for our harmonic pattern, right? Not all patterns, just because you see the shape does not mean it's a harmonic pattern, all right? So usually when it's in between X and D, it has to be somewhere between like 1.112 and like 0 0.8 something um, from X to B it has to be its own ratio. These numbers actually mean something, guys. All right, so when you guys are drawing harmonic patterns, you can't just draw something because, oh, I saw a butterfly. It doesn't work so pretty, unfortunately. Like, yes, yeah, seriously, it doesn't, it doesn't work. I see a lot of people, oh, did you guys see that butterfly? I put up the ratios and we got something that looks like, you know, Frankenstein's monster. It's like some stuff like this. I'm like, uh, that's, not a, that's not a harmonic pattern. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't look completely right at all. So you guys want to make sure you guys got those ratios on check. Use those Fibonacci's. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm sorry that I couldn't uh, go into it. That's like a lesson in its own. I'm not going to lie. It needs its own video. I can't cover how to master harmonic uh, scanning on your own just from looking at stuff. You have to learn how to get the eye for it. But once you do get this, right? So for example, if you're looking for a harmonic pattern or you already have the harmonic pattern, uh, take profits from me. I usually use from my, my D to my C. All right, so when you're looking, when after you already have the harmonic, right, the D to the C, is that you want to drag your 100 on your D, and you want to drag your zero to your C, okay? My take profits are 78.6, 6.18, and a 23.6.
3861100. You can use 100. I don't always I don't always use 100 to be honest. Very rarely do markets want to go 100 or past it. So that's why I generally start from 100. If you guys haven't gotten it already though. Here's my Fibonacci ratios cuz I know that's something like, you know, everyone's Fibonacci's are different. So these are my Fibonacci's. Take a little screenshot really quick, whatever you guys need. Um so these are the Fibonacci ratios that I generally use. Okay? But the main ones that I look for take profits is the uh 236, 618 and the 786. Okay, so when you're drawing a harmonic pattern, like I said, 786 would have been about here. This is for a cell, guys, by the way. The way you guys know for harmonic patterns is that if the D is above the C, you're looking for cells. If the D is above the C, you're looking for cells in a harmonic, okay? And if the D is below the C, you're looking for buys in a harmonic pattern. All right, so this would have been my first take profit. Second take profit right here at the 618. And then a third take profit at the 23.6. And then we also have a fourth take profit to be real. It depends on what you're looking at. You have a beautiful bounce of the 618, right? If it gives you a retracement to the 618 and it still is going, then another take profit or take profit four would be negative 27. This would have been my take profit four. So these four little circles that I drew right here would have been my take profits for this, Fibonacci, for this harmonic pattern. And you use Fibonacci in order to use a good take profit. You guys can use this even if you're not using harmonics. Fibonacci is very useful for take profits. Okay, so I'll leave that up for one more second in case anybody needs it. No, started leading it. All right, so I use that with a confirmation of con candlestick patterns on the on the four hour, the one hour. All right, so I'm gonna go back into the one hour or what I have looked in for for a sell here. Right, we got this whole little candlestick pattern right here. This right here indicates bearish momentum. This is just a retest with a further confirmation. It fails to break this line. Notice how there's a certain structure it can't break. Right, so this would have been the retest, a third retest. This would have been a great entry. So if you didn't get in here on this candlestick pattern right here, good entry right there. Right, and we would have been able to short AUD CAD. We use our take profits of the Fibonacci's. We would have been good on literally all four of them. And that's something that I would use in order to take a short, right, on the AUD CAD. But that's just looking at the, that's something that's on its back test. I've already taken that trade. This is no longer valid. So now we're gonna look at what's going on right now before I give Jesse control of the screen and let him cover a pair. I feel like I'm chatting over here. But um, so on the daily, get a good confirmation, read some candlesticks. Look at the overall trend. Overall, I think it's downtrending, all right? The main reason why, like I told you guys, it broke it broke the pattern. It broke the channel. Um, it already retested. It's currently bouncing off the minor key level. It's having some, some difficulty breaking through that level of support. So right now, it's getting pushed up. So overall, even though I am looking for, um, you know, a downtrending in momentum, I'm not exactly trying to buy this on its way up into this back, into back into this box. I'd rather just wait. Okay, see what it does in this box. If it continues to break out to the upside, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, if it continues to break out to the upside and leaves this box, I'm gonna buy it. Take my little 40 pips, I don't care. Put a bigger or a lot size if I need to, just because it measures, you know, accordingly. And then I'll, I'll buy it from there. But if it doesn't and it comes over here and it gets failed, if it fails to break, right, because this is a very major reversal area, if you notice, then I'm looking for the short opportunity. Take profit one being the hesitation zone of the minor key level, it's about 60 pips. Minor key itself, 85, another side, 110. There's probably a take profit for somewhere down here, previous market structure at 153. What time frame do you draw yellow, blue supply, demand zone boxes on? Okay, so my supply and demand zones are the blue boxes, and I use them on the daily and the four hour primarily. These are the main places I put major reversal areas. So if you notice right here, this box, um, some some instructors will actually tell you that when uh, price breaks through a certain level, it is no longer a sub level of supply and demand. But what I've noticed in back testing is that even though price will break through sometimes a certain level, right, it'll always go back to that level at the end of the day. So when I go back to like the daily, right, and you see my boxes, you can see over here, this was a level of supply and demand or a major reversal area over here in the past in, what was that? September, October, November, it was in that area, right? Broke through. And then it gave you a new level of supply and demand, but it also played around in that area once again in January, played again in that area in April, played again in May, in July, 
all of July when he was playing in that area, right? And it still is playing even technically right now in August. So even though price has broken through it, there's obviously a level of supply and demand that is around this area of 90 of 0.97 flat on the AUD CAD. Same thing for down here. Um, what I ha what I am also noticing, guys, if you guys are not familiar with the quarters theory again, is that these supply and demand zones so happen to be very close to flat numbers, which indicates that there's actually a quarter level there. Um, if you guys don't know, it's from the book, not not my version of the quarter levels. Me and Stanley's version of the quarter levels is a little bit different. But there's a level at 0.97 flat, and there's also a level of 0.97, at 0.96 flat. Those are also quarter points. So keep that in mind that, like, notice how it's also going at that flat number that I told you that are psychological zones for the banks. So these supply and demand zones are further validated by quarters theory. Okay? So I go into the four hour, you look at it again, like I said, major reversals. One, two, three, four five, six, right, so on and so forth. So you can draw these out, like I said, daily, four hour, should be good enough. But my whole thing is, I think that ultimately, since I got met with support at the minor, I don't know if this is necessarily a reversal. Candlesticks sometimes do lie, which is why it's not the only confluence in your trading plan. But ultimately, I am still looking for shorts. I think that AUD by itself is gonna be going down. Like overall, the, tra the trend on the AXY is down. Look at this. I'm gonna go on the AXY just really quick. Look at this, downtrend like a ma from freaking February. From February to now, still downtrending, all right? So anything with AUD in the front, even though there are times where it will be pulling back up, I think is ultimately going down, okay? Because the dollar, the index of the Australian dollar by itself is telling me that, okay? So just keep that in mind why the, the, the indexes are very important to get good ideas of what stuff is going to be doing. So what I need now, right, is that I need this move to either shoot back down, because, you know, I didn't even account for it going back down at this point, Right, but I need to shoot back up, stay in this area, and I need a four hour or a daily candle to break and close outside of this box. When it does that, I take trades. Right, so if I see a candle break and close in this little area right here, if I see a whole candle that went inside and came back down, and the whole candle's outside of there, I'm looking for a sell. All right, if I see Candles breaking close, a big old candle, like straight up the whole thing, open, close, everything outside of here to the top side. I'm looking for buys. All right. Even though it did stuffing like this, right? This is where you're learning how to get read the candles is very important. These are fake outs. Fake out, fake, fake, fake out. All right. So just keep that in mind that like no one not one term of analysis, not one piece of whatever it is you guys are learning in your trading journey will be the be all end all. There is not one strategy that will make you a hundred percent winner. I'm so sorry. I haven't found it yet. If I find it, I'll let you know. But or let me know too. I was about to say if you guys find it, let me know. But honestly, that's the whole thing. You guys need to keep it pretty simple. I gave you a pretty simple checklist if you haven't had one already, okay, to keep a good idea for. I gave you my setup on AUD CAD. I actually posted this chart on the pin post in the GOATS chat. Like I said, I will I will make sure to copy and paste on the baby pips as well. And, um, yeah, so this is what I've generally seen for AUD CAD. And if anybody doesn't agree with my analysis or has any questions on it before I let Jesse take over and let him, uh, you know, cover a pair or two, then have, shoot the questions now or forever hold your peace. I don't know how to trade, guys. Nonsense. Jesse is going to break it down in a different way than, than I will. And he doesn't sound so much like a robot. I'm sorry that I'm – I don't know. One of the most monotone people you ever meet, by the way. He's he's simple. He'll be like, it touches this point, we sell it, okay? I'm not going to say anything more. He touches this point, we buy it, okay? That's it. Like, sh fuck that. We're not complicating this. Tell him. Tell him. Okay, if you guys want trading broken down, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Okay, let's see. All right, cool. So I'm going to stop sharing. What's up? It's your go now. You're up next. I'll go over a couple of setups that I have right now that I'm looking at. So one specific pair that I'm looking at right now that has actually done pretty well for me so far is AUD and ZD, right? So if you look at it recently, what I usually do to answer your question from going from a bigger time frame to a small, I usually start off on a larger time frame, usually go off of the weekly, right? Work my way up. If anything, we notice that it's going on a strong uptrend, right? It's kind of forming this little channel formation. One thing we know about channels is when it forms a high, comes back, tests the low, it'll go form another high, tests the low, more than like they might repeat the process, right? That's what I usually look for. We look on the daily. Here, let me get rid of indicators because I want you guys to stop using indicators. As much as I use them, guys, and as much as I tell you guys to use them, 
you want to use them after you have a good analysis. You know, you want to make a chart first and then add them on. Um, hold on. Somebody has something on the chat. He said, Brian said. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so cool. Um, yeah. So what I started looking at with the UD NZD before when I actually did short it was just the fact that it reached this high. I missed this whole drop here. So I figured, well, let me try to get a good re-entry. So what I did was I did my little triangle as always. Um, what I tried to look for mainly was just to see what I just honestly, sometimes just as simple as a trend line, like I told you guys, will give you guys a good breakout. If you notice when it broke this trend line here, I never really broke it. It came back, retested, shot down. You know, that's what I pretty much profited. I figured it was going to come back and test this level. Now with AUD NZD, one thing that I'm looking for with this pair is I'm trying to look for whether or not it's going to respect this price reversal zone and come back on the upside or if it's going to come back and keep going down, right? If it's going to respect this channel, then more than likely it's going to do what? It's going to come and test up on the upside, right? One thing that I would tell you guys is, like I said, don't overcomplicate trading. Sometimes just as simple as a support line right here and then breaking it, if you notice the level, I mean, resistance right here, what did it do right here? It resisted it, shot down, you know? So one thing that I'm going to keep an eye out for is to see if price were to do something like this per se, it might come back, it might break it. That's what I want to look for. I want to see a retest and I want to see it continue on with its trend, right? I want to see it go on the upside. Now, who's to say it won't, right? Let's say AN were to go ahead and, and decide to go down as it has, like the past, what, since August 9th, right? It's been going on a downtrend since August 9th. What happens if it continues to? Well, one thing that I would look for is for it to break this channel, right? Because if it breaks this channel, then it's a good time for me to go ahead and trade it because I know that it's going to go on the downside. It's been forming this channel since way back in... Hold on, let me draw my fib real quick. Uh, uh, Arthur, to answer your question, because I saw you on the chat, uh, he has different color candlesticks because he's using an indicator. It's an indicator. Oh, I'll over that right now, too. Um, it's been forming this channel since uh, April the 11th, right? So that's some, one thing that I want to look for. If I draw my fib on here, right? It's formed a little bit of a deeper kind of retracement, came back, tapped my 78. So one thing that I want to look for, if you notice where I drew my resistance, what a coincidence that it's also my 618 level, you know? So one thing that I want to look for is just that breakout in general. Um, with AN, I want to, I, I really don't want to touch it right, right now. I'm not going to say buy or sell this. I want I would tell you guys to keep an eye out, right? One reason how I got this price reversal zone was just prior fib. That's what I'm telling you. If you guys want to get good price reversal zones, honestly, a lot of times fit support and resistance zones, price reversals, everything that I've gotten mainly is just from fibs. If you notice, this 51 to 618 retracement is a major price reversal zone. Price comes, reverses, price comes, reverses. So I want to keep an eye out. It's either going to reverse on the downside or the upside. You know, For the most part, it looks like it's respecting it. And I want to see it shoot up and come up to the top of this channel. One thing that I would do, if anything, is you guys need to learn how to trade with stops and limits. Um, if anything, I would wait for, I would play some sort of limit, if anything. I mean, stop. Um, you could try to place a buy stop, see if it'll come and give you a good entry down here. But if anything, I would try to see a break on the upside, and I just want to ride this up. Either way, this move alone isn't that bad of a move. If you're, trade, if you're trading to the top of this resistance, it's still 190 pips. If you're trying to hold it up here, 200 you know so it just depends on where you're trying to go with this pair um if it doesn't and let's say it does break on the downside what i would want to see specifically is i want to see it shoot down break right and i'd want to see it use the same price reversal zone to touch and i would hold this to the next level of support which would probably be around here or at least for me a major level and i'd want to see it come down here if it does this alone, this alone isn't that bad of a move. You're still looking at 100 something pip move, 180 pips, you know? So either way, it's just a game of patience. You guys don't want to force a move. You guys don't want to make it happen, right? How come you have different color candlesticks? Okay. So to answer that, there's an indicator that I use. Um, if you guys don't know, it's called the wave trend. So you go on indicators, you type in wave. It's this one here, the wave trend with the crosses by Lazy Bear. Um, I honestly only use this pair for larger time frames. So example. And the only reason why is you'll see. Um, when you look at this indicator, it'll actually like, it's kind of like your stochastic mix with the MACD. It's, it's a mixture of, I don't even know what indicators this will use, but 
my point being, it's a good way to find out when there's going to be a good breakout in terms of a larger time frame, right? So let's say when this channel formed, one way you could have known is it's at a major buy zone right here, right? And at the same time, it formed a, a level of support down here, which if we're to back test, with the same level, there's been strong levels of support before, right? Pulse respects it. So this alone would have been a double confirmation for me to just want to go ahead and buy it, you know, if I were just to buy it by blindly. And what I would use, what I personally would have done is I would have held this until the next sell zone, right? So when it forms a little dot, it, col it colors the candle for you. So when this candle turned green, it's when the green dot was formed. And if you would have ridden this until your sell zone up here, that would have been a good like 400 pip move, you know? Then when it colored it red, right? Or when it colored this red kind of blue, indicating that it's gonna go on a downtrend now, probably one of, we, want, we wanted to hold it until the next buy zone, right? So more than likely from up here down, yeah, I would have had a pullback of 40 pips, but you would have been in profit over 200, you know? Right here around this zone here, called out a buy, up until this zone here, same kind of deal. 285 so one thing that I usually say is I usually would want to look at this for good setups on the daily when it's close to my buy and sell zones um that's how I would have used it that's how up here when I started looking at that sell with a n I figured it out because right here when I drew my little lines colored my candle blue on the daily so I figured well oh crap this must be a pretty big sell zone that they're calling out right that's why i'm kind of skeptical as to whether a is going to continue and respect this channel if it's going to break it or not because on the wave trend it's still showing me that it still has a ways worth going down right but you never know with these markets i mean um that's why i'm looking at the channel overall to see if it's going to respect it or not but did that kind of answer your question um arthur with the wave trend and the different colored candlesticks yeah cool all right so yeah, keep your eye out on this one. Either way, what I would look for is a long opportunity or a shorting opportunity. You could do either or. If it breaks the channel, of course, I would definitely recommend taking that. Um, but if it respects it, then try to work your way up and catch the way up. It's still a lot of pips you can catch. Um, another bit that I'm going to cover, I know a lot of people do. I usually love AUD. That's one of my pairs. Um, <laughs> I'll cover, I'll, let me erase all of this. So for the most part, guys, same thing with the wave trend. Like I said, I usually love to use this on a daily time frame. About right here, this is what you want to keep an eye out for, right? When it fakes you out. So it's calling about out of buy on the buy zone, right? You would have been in profit 60 pips. And then you would have gotten a pullback of 74. That's why you never just rely on this. Like I, I never want to hear somebody say, oh, I took a trade because the wave trend called out of buy. Don't you ever dare doing that. Like I'll laugh in your face. That's exactly the reason. That's why I want to look at bigger time frames. That's why I don't want to look at something wrong. Look what happened here. They were calling out a sell, right? So what you were catching was a pullback, you know? So when a lot of a lot of times when you guys are asking me, like, how do you trade? I start off on a bigger time frame for this specific reason, right? Because now I know, like, overall, the direction of a longer-term trade is a sell. If you notice, it's respecting my trend line. Oh, you guys ain't ready for all of that stuff. Here, let me just query whatever. I'll just do it later. I was say, use a okay. Whatever. <laughs> but if you guys notice, overall, it's a downtrend, right? If we notice, if we draw a counter trend line, it broke this structure way back when, came back, gave you a tap for a, re, uh, a retest, boom, short, right? That's what I usually look for. What I'll do afterwards is I'll look for different zones where I'll break different trend lines that give me a good tap right about right here, right? Broke structure, came back, gave you multiple taps for a sell, came back down, right? Beautiful. Cool, I'll really look at. Now, if I were to zoom in on the daily, one of the ways, here, I'll zoom in on the four hour later on, but one thing that I would do up to date too is try to look at um, levels of support, right? So strong level of support came back, tapped it again, you know? So one thing I would look for with AUD, uh, AUD USD as well, where is that one to see a break this level of support? If it does, it hasn't broken it in a while. So I know that this is going to be a pretty, pretty good sell, which is what I'm expecting you to do, right? Now, if we come back from last week, one thing that I noticed, if you guys don't remember market patterns that made me catch this buy was this head and shoulders, right? I told you guys that at this zone on Sunday before any of this formed, that you guys wanted to wait for a retest and you wanted to write it up, right? One thing that I also did to kind of figure it out was a fib. 
right? Yeah. And the way I knew that I was going to win was I was looking for it to come back, tap this zone, which if you notice, it's also my 38%. And I wanted to come and see it tap my 50 to 61.8. Did it? Yep. If you guys would have caught this move from last week. You would have caught a good 50 plus move, you know? So it just depends on how long you rid it for or wrote it, ridden it for. You notice the wave trend here is telling you, hey, you want to get out of that buy. It doesn't look like that. You know, you see a little doji right here. You see the next candle red, right? You see that wave trend calling out that it's going to go on a sell, right? Bearish market, shop down. You know, if you use these same fib levels like Dakota said, um, 23 or 38, you could use those as take profits. You guys could have caught some more moves, right? So from here down, you guys could have caught a good 100 pip move. Right. So one thing that I would do is update your fibs a little bit. Try to catch the next move. If we're trying to catch the next move, let's measure the previous high and low. Go on your fib. Nice high, low is low. Oh, surprise. What, what is this right here, guys? What is it respecting? You guys should it's at this zone that I'm looking at. It's at my 51, 50 to 61.8 zone, right? It's respecting it. It's it, literally it wicked it once and twice. You know, so one thing that I want to look for with AUD USD to be specific is I want to look for a shorting opportunity, right? If you notice, where's my negative 27%? It's that previous support. Fibs give me all the information I really need, you know? So one thing that I want to look for is I want to look for AUD to reject this zone down here and break out of my, my um, rectangle right here. Like Dakota said, if the next candle closure is below here, I'm going to look to short it down to the next level of support, right? I don't really want to mess with it when it's in this zone right here because who's to say it's going to continue up, you know? I'm not going to say it will, but my point being is when it rejects this zone, it's a pretty good zone for me, but just to be safe because you can never be too safe, I would probably wait when it breaks down below this box here, you know? So I'm going to try to catch this move down, and that's still a good 100 pip move, you know? And always trade with the trend. Try to trade with the trend, never fight against it. And that's how I would usually catch my moves. Um, did you guys have any questions at least, though? Anything at all that I could clarify on? Mm -hmm. Anybody got any questions about what he covered? But if you notice, we generally say the same thing, guys. Support, resistance. If it doesn't break a certain zone, we don't take it. If it breaks out of that zone, we take it. Shouldn't be too complicated. I, I know one of the main problems that people usually have is overthinking. So I know you guys are probably overthinking your trades. You guys are lacking the confidence to take some of your trades. That's why demo is so clutch. Okay, so definitely use that. You can't go wrong with demo. Nope. No. And if you're like in dress, you could always just ask them to transfer the money from your demo to your live account, guys. It's not a big deal. <laughs> that was funny. I'm not going to lie. Was, um, do you have anything you want me to go cover or anything that you want me to clarify on? Any, it doesn't matter what. Yeah, if you guys don't have any, I missed some biz move I saw because of overthinking. Straight up, this is in regards to the lesson, but would you guys recommend Liquid FX? Liquid FX is actually my favorite broker. I'm using them right now. Liquid and LMFX. Liquid has very low spreads. They cover like most, like most if not all pairs. They're actually, um, they are technically like unregulated, but that allows you for bigger leverage, which kind of works anyway, because we're not trying to have one to 200 leverage. I would recommend one to three, one to five, maybe even one to a thousand if you're a scalper or you're, or you're a big boy swing trader with a, with a leveraging uh, margin for that. So Liquid FX is really, really cool. But um, if anything, Jesse, what you want to do is do you want to start covering some of the analysis that has been shared on GOAT so that way uh, people can generally, you know, see what the, what the big, go big dogs are seeing? Um, sure. The only problem is I don't have Telegram on my um, – All right. I'll switch, I'll switch back over then. On my laptop. All right. All right. So we're going to – we got about – question on my FX book. When you create the account, what platform do you use? Uh, what do you mean by what platform do you use? Uh, you're supposed to link it to your, to your broker account. So if you have like a MT4 ECN account, that's the one you're going to be doing. MT4 stands for MetaTrader. ECN is the, the general economic account. I think is what it's, ECN stands for. And you link it to your broker regardless of whatever is going on. Um, let me see. All right, so let's go into the pin post.
because there's entry for EA and auto update. Oh, you can do auto update if you want. Um, that would just basically show on every time on my verified effects book. If you take a trade, it'll update. If you you know close a trade out, it'll update. Like my verified effects book has like everything relating to your trading account, like your percentage gains. How many uh, uh, buys that you win, how many sh uh, sells that you win, all that. It's really, really cool. What leverage do you recommend we use when starting a $100 account? Um, I would say um, if you don't understand how leverage necessarily works, I would definitely go back into learning what leverage basically is. But with starting a $100 account, it depends on how comfortable you are and your trading style. So me personally, when I started my first $100 account, um, I actually had a 1 to 500 leverage. Okay, or uh, and then I also had another account that I did one to three hundred leverage. Uh, less leverage you have, the less open trades you guys can have. Okay, the, the the smaller lot sizes that you guys can put on these trades as well. So just always keep that in mind. Um, so I would probably say like one to three hundred, one to five hundred, depending on your trading style. If you find yourself taking a trade on like every pair, then you might want a bigger leverage. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. Um, this is my AUD CAD. You guys are like I already said. I already kind of covered this for you guys. As you see right here. I gave you the live res uh, representation of what exactly I saw in the AUD CAD. So I'm going to go back and get the other pair. Hold on, the chat box says what now? Makes sense. Thanks. Can you show an example of how you draw your supply and demand? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, let me do that really quick before we get on to the actual currency pairs. Um, you. CHFJPY. All right, so for example, I'm on the four hour right now. I already, I already kind of see one. I'm not gonna lie. Me too. Okay, look, look on the four hour. Well, on the four hour, like exactly I told you. And notice how every time it touches in this area, reversal happens. Rejection, wicks coming out, trying to you know fake you out. So literally, the minute I hopped on the CHFJPY, I already got met with the supply and demand zone, just as we as we see right now in front of us. That's hot. Very hot. Love when I get that. So like, there's no proper necessarily like you know perfect way to draw it. I generally try to have it so when my wicks are in there. You don't want the box to be too big. You know what I'm saying? You're not trying to have like a 50, 100 pit box. <laughs> trying to borrow from sell. Yeah. Can you guys put your 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 two, three to five brokers for forex and crypto in chat? I need to make another account real soon. You want me to put all my brokers? I have like seven brokers right now. I'm actually in the process of opening an eighth one this week. Not gonna lie, there's the one that just started accepting crypto that should be regulated too. I'm gonna test it out. I don't rest. I don't really recommend brokers that I have not personally used, so I'm not gonna tell you the one that I that I'm just now getting started with. But I'll show you the ones that I already use, and uh, you guys, you can you can pick out of all those. All right. So look, this, um, I'm assuming iPhone. Is that you? Is that you, Trevor? iPhone. But um, hmm. so. After that, I would draw another one for cells, right? So somewhere probably around like down here. Major zone. Right? So like notice how like it bounces up and down in between these areas. And then of course you got the beautiful quarter level that basically does the supply for us. But get rid of the hesitation zone right now. Don't have too much shit on my chart. Literally my problem. I have them too marked up. Yeah, I have them too marked up too. I still have analysis from like two weeks ago that I need to get rid of. So, yes, clean charts are, are friendly charts, guys. I mean, I know like you know, even with the clean charts, sometimes you guys don't understand what the hell we be we be writing up on here. But I'm just trying to make sure how my charts are understood, even by the most simplest of people. All right, cool. So, did you see how I was able to draw supply and demand zones, bro? Just by like literally looking at pl uh, places that prices tends to reverse around. Like you saw, like the minute I hopped on, this little area right here was perfect. So I actually saw a couple people in the chat, a couple of the better traders that I know of, like Tony, for example. I don't know if he's on here, but Tony called a CHF JPY sell, and so did John and Fonte. Um, both of them are really good. Both have been learning from me and Jesse. So I'm, I like I take their analysis into account. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. Like, just because some of us are like more experienced does not mean that we're always going to be right and you're going to be wrong. Okay, there are times where like the student surpasses the master. All right, there's going to be times where you guys catch a trade and I didn't. I know a couple people, like Jesse caught the Euro USD buy on the way back up. I wasn't paying attention to the charts and I didn't. Like I caught negative drawdown on my short. I ended up getting hit by stop loss. So even though I'm an experienced trader, I still get my stop losses hit. I still take losses. Thanks for the break. All right, cool. 
So yeah, just keep that in mind that like, you know, trust your analysis. If you like, if you're lacking confidence because everyone else is calling Euro USD sell and you're trying to buy it, put it on a demo account. See if you were right. If you were right, take your trades more often than you would take other people. The whole point of us doing this chat is not for you guys to take our signals. It's to give you guys analysis, give you guys our perspective so you guys can see what we see. We we'll break it down for you on the baby pips chat so you guys can understand and eventually draw these charts yourselves. I want to see one day, like who knows, maybe a year from now, Everybody in the go chat dropping charts and everything looks sexy. Everyone's agreeing with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody knows how to read all the candles. That'd be fire. Why the hell not? You know what I'm saying? I have a hundred traders all saying, you know, USD sell. We can move markets like that. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not actually, but everybody dropping lots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the banks, their, their version of a standard, the banks use a hundred lots. So they're moving a thousand dollars per pit. They're not seeing little people like us. We have to like really, you know, buckle down on this stuff. We can definitely, we can definitely all get it out here. So now we got the supply and demand zones on the CHF JPY. Like I really think this is going to be a short. The, it already left the box. We got a four hour break and close below. Look at it. Look exactly where the candle opened at the beginning. I think it's going down because it's been going up for too long. It has been going up way too long. So if you guys don't know, that's like the best type of analysis ever. I'm just being that is, that is that's a beginner's analysis, one. okay? Like, I'm not trying to discredit anybody that says something like that. I'm just literally saying don't put it in the chat box saying, like, oh, this pair has been going up way too long. I think it has to be going down, strong sell, resistance. <laughs> Keep that in mind. That's not an actual confluence. Unless Fugachi tells you that, you know what I'm saying? That's not an actual confluence. Thank you for cream, cream for getting them out of my DMs. <laughs> so, for example... If we're looking for like if we're looking for a buy opportunity, because ultimately CHF JPY to me is a buy, but I am seeing a beautiful pullback that most, if not all of us, could possibly ride. Okay. So normally, like I said, I wouldn't trade against the trend, but this looks pretty, pretty fire in terms of a crystal clear setup. Because remember, when we take trades, setups, okay? So we have a four hour <laughs> we got a four hour close, right? A whole candlestick that straight up left the box of my major reversal area, right? We drew the Fibonacci's, and if you notice, the very big level of support resistance is also around my 618. So I'll draw it right here. If you guys don't know, if you guys have been on previous Zooms, not only is uh, Jesse's favorite area between the 0.5 and the 618, my favorite and almost, if not anybody who trades Fibonacci's, favorite ratio, 618. 618 is the golden ratio. Check the harmonic. We got a crystal ball, guys. <laughs> Oh man, what goes up what comes down, must come down. That that is true. That's exactly why we use Fibonacci's because what goes up must come down. But it's not so much that like it's been going up too long. We're gonna sell it. You know what I'm saying? So if anything, I would look for a main take profit is somewhere around here, the six one eight area, somewhere in that five eight six one eight area. And if you notice, like I said, with the boxes that I've been drawing out, that is a pretty solid level of stuff. Not knowing what it wants to do when it gets there. Can everybody see that? What do I call that zone, guys? Do you remember? You guys, everybody remember what it's like that zone is called? I think it has an explicit name. A little Lucas, red Lucas loves calling. Lucas remembers it. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's my zone. That's the R rated zone, the fuck zone. You know what I'm saying? Zone, zone, the buy zone, fuck zone in the middle, and that's your freaking setup. Yeah, if you guys, you know, um, like, so for example, this would be like his fuck zone, right? So this is the area that he's like, like fuck trading in this area, right? He's looking for like, yo, let's take some buys. And this is an area for like, okay, we're taking some sales. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody got that? What the fuck's on? That's how Jesse tell you, man. It's not that complicated. We're trying, me and Jesse are finding like a thousand ways to word this. So that way you guys can all understand it. Eventually we'll have a trading for dummies book coming out. Yeah, like they have all those books for dummies at Barnes and Noble. They need to have a trading one. Oh, um, you're saying that a representative will be the authors. <laughs> yeah. You guys better buy it. Dummies. I think I have that. Lucas probably does. Lucas has a PDF for like everything. everything. What the hell? What doesn't he have? For real, I also have the book Trading for Dummies, which is the funniest part. But like, we're gonna make it even simpler than that book. How to read Trading for Dummies for Dummies? That's that's what we're. Our <laughs> that's what I need. <laughs> So the ultimate thing, even though, like I said, the uptrend is the overall move for CHF uh, JPY, according to this beautiful channel that's being formed, right? It's currently respecting that channel and the, the level of res uh, support resistance is that we're looking for the drop. Ultimately, 
I think that the, the best sell opportunity, I mean, the buy opportunity, when it, if it bounces off the 618. If it bounces off 618, if you guys don't know, 618 usually indicates it's going back to negative 27. And if you guys also don't know, when something breaks out of a key level, it usually goes to the other key level. So if you guys haven't noticed, this quarter level is now acting as support. It's very likely the next minor key is going to be our next take profit for the longer term, right? This is more like a swing type setup. So I think that the short should be happening probably all this week. And maybe next week we'll have that upwards momentum for the CHFJPY. If it doesn't, you know, bounce off the 618, 786 is my next area of where I'm looking to, to buy it at, okay? So if you guys haven't already taken profit for the sell, if you guys are going to sell this, it would be somewhere around this area. 786 is also very strong. It's also further added because there's a quarter key level right there. So that's like another confluence that you guys want to, you know, keep that in mind when you're taking this trade, if you guys are going to take it. I want, like I said, when stuff bounces off 618, 786, negative 27 is usually the go-to. And it's not a coincidence that the 27 is dead ass right next to the minor key level, guys. That's not coincidence. There's very few coincidences in Forex or in life, in my opinion. Bro, sign up my network. Believe me, we're brothers now. Hmm. I got you, Karim. Hurry up and buy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm only one more person away from my next rank up. Come on. Yes, bro. One more person. This one. But so like if you guys can see right here, this is the CHFJPY. This is one of the analysis that uh, people in the you gotta pay your car lease people drop. <laughs> uh okay, so that's CHFJPY, all right. That was um my boy Belgian Pips, okay, AP. If you guys don't know who AP is, he was also looking for the short. M mind you, this is a, this little line that he drew at the 113.2 is that box that I drew, guys. Watch, we'll go back to my chart. We'll go back to my chart. Where's my chart? Boom. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Exactly. Where did I draw my box? 113.2. Where did my mans put his line? I didn't look at it before that. Okay? So, like, that goes to show you. Now you have another confluence. So, now Dakota and AP, Dougie Pips, are saying, THF, JP, are looking, it's going down. Meet me in the mall. It's going down. No young jock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to put a song. Right, two and three. I'll teach you how to get more pips than... You're two and free will even know how to count. Okay? So you don't even give a damn about being free. I'll show you the skills that pay the bills. We'll show you how the pips will set you free. This is how you get your two and free. Two and free. Let me show you how to catch two and free right quick. Okay, guys? Look, let me show you right now. Ready? Is you want to place your little cells. Hold on. Let me, let me see right here. There you go. 16 pips. 16 pips? All right. I want you to throw a standard on this. So 1.00 on this trade right here. 16 pips. You got your monthly. There's your two and free. Two and free. Goodbye. If, if you guys are not comfortable with that. Thing is, I'm not going to like joke around too. I would highly suggest if you guys do want to get some pretty good accurate signals because we all know that I'm not going to send any. Um, for any reason, well, for all of you wondering why I don't, I used to send signals like crazy. But the only reason why I don't is because I feel like a lot of people don't really learn the skill set. And I'm more uh, the type of person where I'd rather teach you guys on how to actually do what I'm doing instead of having you guys just profit on my trades. Um, but if you guys do want to get any signals, I would highly recommend reaching out to Kareem. He's on this chat. Um, but reach out to him. You know, if you guys want to, he has his own little group. He'll give you signals. I don't know how much it is. I think it's like 100 a month or something like that. But that's how you can get some good quality signals um, if you want to. Yeah, 100 euros is about 116 or $130, I think, give or take a month. So, because I know Karim was in, he does euros. Euros. So, yeah, if you guys trade euro USD, you should know that it's like about $114 and like $14 or something. I simply like sell profits, not dreams. Yeah, look, Karim said it best. So, me and Jesse will prefer to send out analysis because we guys want you to understand what it is that we're calling. I'm not saying that Karim doesn't do that because Karim is very, very helpful and he wants you guys to understand his trading ideas. But I know he does sell signals. So if that's something that you guys want to, you know, rely on, absolutely take advantage of it. Karim is a beast trader. I've been watching him and we've been trading together for like four or five months now, I think, give or take. Or no, probably a little bit less than that, to be real. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've been getting kicked out of group chats or whatever. But uh, the whole thing is like, yeah, even if you're not catching 16 pips on the standard, you can catch this 160 pip move and throw a point and throw a, a point one, right? And it's still $160. And uh, like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to bash anything else. I'm just letting you know what Karim does have, and Karim does charge less. So just keep that in mind. Very useful. We've been blessed to have Karim in, in, in our group chats as well. 
So he'll be able to provide some some type of free value as well as the paid value if you guys choose to, you know, help my man's in his business and, you know, catch some good pips alongside with him. So there goes that. Um, let's see what else. We'll cover another. We're gonna actually going to do Zoom and around Academy in the Making, my people. See, Karim's also got an Academy in the Making, too. It's about to be there lit. You there you go. Confirmation from one of the GOATs. All right. So let's see. So we covered CHF, uh, we're going to cover Karim's AUD USD. We just saw with Jesse's as well. Jesse was also looking for short opportunities on AUD USD. Okay. This chart was actually Karim posted this on the 22nd. Uh, Universal Standard Time at 11 is 8 p.m. for us, I think, 7 p.m. for us. Um, so on the 22nd at 8 p.m., he basically called uh, AUD USD sell. Um, if you guys don't know how to read this, right? Obviously, you guys can see the Fibonacci. The monthly resistance is when he put monthly res. Monthly support is right there. Uh, weekly, also, too, is what Karim uses. And these, this little box right here is the same thing as our green and red box, guys. So when you guys are looking at the stop loss and stuff like that, this is he's putting a 40.5 pip stop loss according to the entry of this line right here. Where the red meets the blue, that's where his entry ideally is going to be at. Okay? And so his, his stop loss is 40.5 pips above that. And the take profit is down here, 212 pips below that, All right? So if you guys want, if you guys can't, you know, count the pips yourself or you guys got different entries or whatever, the way that you would look at it is the numbers to the right, right? These little, this little label right here, this red one, shows you the number at the stop loss is at. Okay, so my main stop loss is somewhere around the 7389 area, according to this little chart, right? And the take profit is around the 71365 area. Okay, that's how you would read these. Okay, so for example, the AUD USD sell. This is his stop loss, right? The entry is probably um, right, right here where the price met. All right, so if you see a blue and a red label, that means price is being met there. So it's somewhere between 73.48 and 73.32. Somewhere in that area, in that spread, he, he took an entry. Okay, and this is his ulti ultimately take profit, and this is his ultimate stop loss for the chart that we see before us. And that's how you would read the loss motherfucker I've seen. So y'all can copy my knowledge from my brain. Ye can you just give me your brain? <laughs> yeah, let me borrow it real quick. Um, I don't want to copy and paste. I want to actually learn. The profits will eventually come. Mad respect for DNJ. I got you, Rudy. That's why I appreciate you, bro. You've been you've been around here for like I think longer than me, bro. So I fuck with that shit. I like the energy. I like the fact that you're not giving up. You're gonna catch major pips. It's gonna pay out. The way I always tell people, if it takes you ten years to make like ninety million dollars in forex and you only spent a couple thousand dollars to learn, or maybe even for free, because now me and Jesse have been trying to provide more free value for you guys. Would you guys regret nine years of learning how to trade if you hit $90 million? Almost nobody's gonna regret that, guys. I don't care if you spend 100K in the next 10 years. If it takes you $1 million on year 10, it's gonna be more than worth it. You literally made 10 times your investment, okay? So if you gotta grind your freaking face off for a while so you guys get the hang of it, just remember never to give up on these markets. They're not going anywhere. The money is there. You just have to learn how to adjust the emotions around it, all right? So good stuff, good stuff, guys. All right, so AUD USD, I'm going to cover it over here on my chart. Also looking for sell opportunities. Um, I think Karim entered here because, remember, he got in on the 22nd, so his analysis was done from these candlesticks over here. All right, so currently he's already in profits, according to this. Uh, the maximum profit he was hitting, if he had entered around here, was around 100 and something. He's probably still floating. Who fucking knows if he if he's uh if he's that much of a beast? I'm pretty sure he is because you know him, my man, 80 lots, Mr. 80 lots. I know for reals. Bitch pulled back at me, but it will tank. So look, there he goes. Uh, look, so he already knows if, this is just a pullback, right? So if we guys are looking for sells, we guys we know the pullback is gonna be on its way back up. Pull back up, right? Followed by that beautiful drop. All right, so that's what we're looking for. If it so happens to come into this box one more time, then you guys are getting some really good entries. We're going to get entries around the same time where I originally entered and Karim entered and, you know, Jesse entered. A couple other people who I know were, uh, were uh, shorting AUD USD last week, right? They'll see that as well. And so even if you didn't enter, it's not the best entry, but there's, poss there's potential for it, right? But remember, Sunday is going to be slow. It's going to be choppy. There's going to be fake outs. I wouldn't want to jump right in as soon as markets open up in 10 minutes. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Yes, yeah, so the markets open up in 10 minutes, guys. 
So we are looking for short opportunities on AUD USD. Okay, wait for wait for this pullback to either complete and then enter there, or straight up just like you know move on to the next move. We'll we'll possibly notify you if a pullback has has been has been there and someone catches it. I'll make sure to keep an update on the on the group chats for everybody. Um, so overall, AUD USD looking like a short. I agree with Karim for sure. Jesse, any quarrels with AUD short? Um, well, I'm, I'm in it, um, but I mean, I would definitely recommend looking at NU if you guys are. If you want to look for other shorts, NVD USD will probably be a really good short too. Facts. And then another thing we could do as a confluence is that we actually have Jesse's NZD USD trade right here. So now we look at his chart markup. All right, guys. So August 22nd, around the same time, Jesse posted that we're going to be shorting NZD USD once it hits this area, which he, it already did. Right, this area is around the 66.98. Okay, so that's 67 flat. Let's go over to NZD USD and see what we got going on at 67 flat. So if you notice, we actually have. Right, we actually have a little area right there. Now we're looking for opportunities. Okay, so that's also 67 flat, 67.2 area. This is also where Jesse said he's looking for a short. There's an inverted head and shoulders, as you guys can see on his chart right here. All right, 240. Okay, another thing too, like guys, when you guys are learning how to read these charts on TradingView Publishings, when you guys see where it says 240, that's how many minutes. Okay, so if it's 240 minutes, it's a four-hour candlestick. These are four-hour charts on the 240. If you see a 120, those are two-hour candlesticks. If you see a 60, it's a one-hour candlestick. Yeah, look, see, look at those. But some people don't know that. So I decided to clarify that because sometimes we'll post analysis and it does not say 4 H. And people will be like, what chart is that? 240. So it's, it's all done by minutes until you get to the daily. When you get to the daily, it will say D. So overall, he's looking for short opportunities. If you see his box, it kind of goes into that same area that I had right here. All right. So he shorted it from this, this point right here. Right, so at his at his maximum, right, no drawdown. He was catching about eight hundred. I mean, eighty pips, ninety. Pips. I wish full. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. So you see that he already caught eighty pips. And mind you, guys, if you guys haven't noticed, I have period separator. So from this yellow line to this yellow line is only one day. Jesse caught in less than a day about eighty pips. Okay. I, mean, I was happy that day. I'll tell you that. Yes, it was a very good. It was a very good Wednesday slash Thursday. It was. I'll never forget. He went to the movies and all. We went to the beach and celebrated with wine. It was very nice. That's what happens when you catch pips. You guys can go to the movies. And go drink wine at the beach. Exactly. Like, wine. don't get me wrong. I'll be on the charts 24-7 because I'm obsessed, but you guys do not have to be on the charts 24-7. Taking time away from the charts is actually very, very helpful. It's called analysis paralysis when you guys are just staring at charts too long and you guys are seeing stuff that's not there. You will see setups that like literally hallucinate before your eyes, okay? So you guys just need to be careful with how much chart time you're actually putting on. You know, go read a book, go meditate, I don't know, go do a backflip off of a rock, I don't know. Go wrestle an alligator. Go wrestle an alligator, he always tells me to go do that because I live in the Everglades, so it's pretty lit. All right, so when we're, what we're doing for, for the NZD USD, right, we're looking for the short opportunity Jesse's charts are pretty simple, obviously, as you guys can see right here. Another beautiful thing, too, if you guys haven't noticed, is that he showed you how to use the wave trend. If you guys can see his wave trend right here, it actually went into the oversell, over, uh, overbought zone. So we're looking for a sell, right? And then we have a crossover happening as well. Right. It's like it's going to break back down lower. So now this NZD USD sells further validated, okay? Then we have the 38.2 on his Fibonacci's, which is currently respecting another reason why we're taking a sell. Okay, the head and shoulders, and it's at previous market structure. Let's see if there's any candlestick patterns that we can read that are like telling us it's going down for sure, too. All right, all right. Uh, this right here is a pretty good combination, too. I like this pattern right here, these two. These two are nice, pretty candlesticks. This third one is a further confirmation. Even now to where it's at, it's got a cute little doji. I just want to look for a red engul engulfing. Exactly. So, and then another thing too, my moving average crossovers. I don't know if you, do you have moving averages on yours? No, you got your no moving averages. 
All right, no, so no, no, no. Two, another thing that I like to use is my, is, is my indicator, the only indicator that I really actually use, which is sometimes sparingly, but it's at, mostly at the end of my confirmation checklist. It's like I said, I don't know if you guys told you guys earlier, if red is above blue, I'm looking for buys. If blue is above red, I'm looking for sells. So if this blue does not cross this red right now, I'm looking for further sell opportunities because the blue is still above, right? And every time the blue has been above the red line, it sells, it sells. See, blue is above red, sell. Blue above red, sell. This is an area of consolidation. I don't really trade that, right? Blue below red, buy. Blue above red, sell. Blue above red, sells. Sorry if I'm going a little fast. I just wanted to, the no market's open in five minutes. Just want to cover like one or two more pairs from the GOAT chat. All right, so I think NZDUSD as well as AUDUSD are also sells. And then if you guys don't need the physical technical analysis, right, you guys remember what I said about correlation. AUD and NZDUSD are both 90% positively correlated. 90% positively correlated. So when AUD goes down, it's 90% likely that NZD is going down. If AUD is going down, AUD USD is going down, it's 90% likely NZD USD is also going down. Okay, 90% positive correlation. Nuggets, exactly. Always trying to drop some nuggets. People downplay the correlation. One of the favorite things that me and Jesse like to do when it hits London session for the correlation pairs is that we... Mm, my favorite. Yeah, the minute London session hits, Euro and GBP USD tend to spike up for a little bit. And Jesse and I always catch about 25 pips on that move when markets, when markets do London session opens. That's how I used to do my 10 pips and dip, guys. When it comes London session, you'll, you just need to figure out the direction the market's going with the, pound, with the European currencies. It'll usually tend to shoot up like anywhere from 20 to 50 pips um, from like the first couple hours of London, and then it'll correct itself afterwards. Yes. Um, that's what I look for. And then I would just do my 10 pips and dip. The main reason those currencies bounce up is because those people in the European zone of the Euro, the GDP, and the Swiss franc, they're all waking up and they're starting to live their lives and go to the bank at that time. Okay, guys? So just keep that in mind. Check out the Night Owl session. Nah, man. We got a different Night Owl session going on this week. Well invited <laughs> to the UJ buy for a 200 pip tank stuff. <laughs> All right, so uh, another thing that we got, we want to see too. Guys, I don't know if you guys are noticing a certain market pattern that's currently might be forming right now. Can anybody tell me the name of the potential market pattern that I'm looking for right now? Double top. Okay, oh. yeah, that's like actually a good one. I'm looking for a double top. We're looking for a double top, exactly. So another thing is a double top, by the way, guys, if you guys haven't gotten on already, one thing that I do actually, look, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to bring up IML, but one person in IML who I know has created his own little strategy, well, to my knowledge, he created his own strategy, it's Lasaldo Talvarez, and he does teacups, right? Okay, these things are actually pretty, pretty useful, right? So it, you can you usually see them on double tops. So double top is actually a pretty nice teacup, right? So we have a teacup with no handle. There's a difference between a cup and a handle, which is a different market pattern, okay? And a teacup, right? A teacup usually indicates a 25 pip sell. So if you see that it fails to break this zone, you can take this for at least 25 pips to the downside. He says take profit to usually about 50 pips. But usually teacups are, mind you, teacups are only sells. Teacups are only sells. If you guys have ever been on a Zoom with Magnus, though, you'll learn that there's something else called an inverted teacup. He likes to call them turtle suits. Turtle suits, is that what they're, that's what they are? Inverted? Teacups. Inverted teacups are turtle suits. So, for example, right? Oh. This is, this is a, this would be a turtle suit right here. Think about it as like a turtle shell. You know what I'm saying? They were. Is that, that's just, I thought the. Yeah, no, he just has his own terminology. Don't worry about it. The whole point is, it doesn't matter about the vernacular that you guys are using for these that's patterns. True. Okay, as long as you guys understand what these patterns generally mean, okay? Well, yeah, look at the gap view. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, so this teacup is actually a pretty useful technique, but it's also, it's, if it does formulate like this, this will also be a double top. So either way, both of them are looking for cells. That's Magnus' epsilon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally, a turtle suit. No, literally, that's, that's what I have to call it when I'm on Zoom with him. Straight up. So, look, the way that we do this right now is if it forms right here and it fails to break these, this area, like I said, 
further validated double top, right? Major reversal area. You know what I'm saying? Super level of resistance. All right, moving average crossovers. Candlestick patterns, okay? Double top teacup, whatever. All of these things have just checked off that basically we're looking for a sell opportunity when it breaks and closes below this box again. Okay, if it goes back up and breaks and closes below, looking for another sell at the end of the day. If you guys haven't gotten that by now, look, keep an eye. Oh, market's just open. Look at the pad. Look at the candle just open, guys. Let's look at the gap on the fit on the fit here. All right, guys. So for example, when markets open, this happens. Four pip gap. I'm really good off trading this. I do not want to trade a four pip gap. Okay. You, want four pip gap? you want you don't want four pips? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Yeah, guys, so, don't a four pip gap. Yeah, you don't need to trade a four pip gap. If you guys want to learn how to trade gaps, it definitely works. EG, EU just gap down. Oh, let's go. How much of a gap is that one? Yes, it did. Oh, that means it's got to correct back upwards though. So pull back imminent. Oh, three pips. Three pips on the EU gap. That's shit. That is, this shit. is gap day. I like I like big gaps. So one of the big boys gap. I like big gap 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 oh wow! Like. But look at that. They didn't actually gap. You didn't gap. You didn't. Uh, uh, you didn't not today. None of them gap. Check the harmonic scanner, says Kareem. Check the harmonic scanner. Might give you a good setup. You know what? If they I might actually. I'm not gonna lie. It just might. <laughs> They're good for creating uh, shitty markets like this. Oh, perfect example, guys, because I was just talking about teacups, right? This is a teacup right here on GU that I called last week. If you guys were any, I called this on the GOAT chat, too. I called this literally on the 22nd. 22nd had some really nice setups. It was Wednesday, okay? This was a nice teacup. It did a stop loss on and all that. If you guys didn't get on the GU short, I think I was actually uh, one of the first people to put the GU short, right? And the teacup was further validated, right? So my first take profit was definitely – oh, shit, I'm already up 60 pips. That's lit. Um, my first take profit is about here. Look at 25 pips, 30 pips. I would have been done in like five hours, guys. Look at that head and shoulders. Yeah, you see that too? Mm -hmm. Head and shoulders. You guys, does anybody see the head and shoulders too? I know we said we're going to end at five, so I'm going to just almost wrap it up right now after this, uh, this pair, if anything. And we'll cover another Zoom later yeah. on. People are in IMO just cracking jokes. Yeah, guys, Kareem's always just joking around. Don't take it to heart. Yeah, I hope, I hope no one's actually getting offended. What's the difference of a teacup and a handle and a teacup? Ah, uh, perfect, perfect question. Okay, so a cup and a handle will actually indicate a buy, whereas a teacup by itself with no handle will indicate a sell. So if you guys see right here, the GBP USD, right? This is just straight up a teacup. So I looked for the sell opportunity. But for example, I think I had a, tea, a cup and handle on, boom. Well, look at that. A cup and a handle on AUD USD, right? So we got the cup followed by a handle. Normally, what you're going to be doing when you do the regular teacup is you're going to be selling the actual handle, right? So if you guys can take profit at the bottom of this handle, that'd be pretty lit. But ultimately, the cup and handle indicates buy, buy zones. So I saw the cup, saw the handle, bought when it broke out of my hesitation zone. So entry around here, right? Take profit up here in this, in this area. Remember, we always, and it's got a, it, it did the retest. This is ultimately the retest of the AUD break of wedge has a wedge going on that it broke through and it came back up to retest. So now we got 86 pips just from the cup and handle plus the retest candlestick pattern confirmations. The handle is a little dip. Exactly. So for example, if you guys just see the teacup, you guys are just selling for the handle, right? And if the handle starts to actually be formed, then you get out of there, you get out of the cell and then you start to buy entries after the handles formed. That's how you know the difference between a cup and a cup and a handle. Um, so for example, that's the difference right there. Uh, we'll cover one, one more pair really quick. Cause I wasn't able to, we weren't able to cover all the pairs. Do you want to cover one of the pairs, Jesse? You want to break down one of the pairs? Yeah, sure. Which one? Uh, let's see. What pair do we not cover? Do you guys want to cover EJ? Do we want to cover UCAD? Oh, okay. If I have to. No, no, no. You don't like UCAD. Okay. So you want to do EJ? I mean, I could, no. Karim, Karim posted an EJ and we could also look at Keith's EJ. They're both in agreeance. Um, Arnie's saying to look at EJ. EJ? Arnie says EJ. All right, cool. I like, I like EJ. CHFJPY. We already went over that one. It's a sell. Yeah, we went over CHFJPY already, Jason. You were actually watching it. You and your homeboy were, were in your, were in your car. You were blatantly uh, staring at the screen. I don't know what you were listening to, but 
we did cover we did cover CHF JPY. We're looking for shorts. All right, so this is Keith's, and then I'm gonna bring up. Okay, it was that one. Perfect. All right, cool. And then I'm gonna bring up Karim, so that way we can compare the both of them. All right, so. All right, Jesse, take it away. Let me let me see what you see that Krim's telling us. Okay. Do you want me to share my screen or what? Okay. Yeah. Like you don't have Telegram. I gave you remote control, so you should be able to move the mouse. I don't know how to do that. I'll just share my screen. <laughs> I'll just look at their chart on my phone, and I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. Wait, no, hold on. I can send you the link. Where are you on? Where are you on Zoom right now? On your phone? No, I'm on my laptop. Where's Caesar? Caesar's probably not on. He thinks he's too oh, good. Perfect. Yeah, this is the same. Okay, okay, this is good. Um, where is it? Yeah, so you cover Karim's and I'll cover I'll cover Keith's because I actually cool. know a little bit about Renko's. Okay, so one thing, guys, that I would let you know about when people are posting trades, um, one thing that I would do is I would look at where they're trying to enter, right? So overall, what Karim's looking at, same kind of deal. Your JPY on the daily, right? He did a fib, right? He's running it. It's right here, retracing in between his 50 to 61 zone, right? Suspecting it pretty well. Market is over bought right over here on the stochastic, right? So overall, this is calling out the direction of a sell with the euro, right? One thing that I would do personally, if you guys are going to jump in on here, if you notice there's some different prices right here, I usually, if you don't really know what you're doing at this point, I would try to place a stop, right? So at this point right here, 127, 616, that's your 50% zone. If anything, I'd probably place a sell stop around this place, right? So if price were to break through, that activates your sell, you're actually in the sell now, right? Because you don't want to just jump in blindly and the next thing you know, you jump in on the sell because you see somebody's markup and boom, you're screwed. You want to wait for the move to actually happen, right? So if it does actually happen, it looks like over here, it would be a good zone, right? If we look at my analysis real quick, I just wanted to show you guys a quick little couple things. It broke out. I was looking at this in terms of the weekly earlier, right? Respected it for the most part up until it broke it. If you remember anything about the wave trend, this is falling out of sell, right? Mm -hmm. This was a little teacup that kind of formed, or yeah, little teacup that formed right here. Came back and it tapped the, the same trend, right? Or the same weekly trend. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at for, I'm looking for short right around this zone. I'm looking for this to come and reject and shoot down. You know, um, so that's one thing that I look for when I look at the markets. Like I said, guys, I usually would place a stop. What I look for when I see their analysis in particular, if I see an EJ sell like this and I confirm it and I think it's good, I look at previous market structure. So what I would do is I would come on right here. This looks like a pretty good level of support right here when it actually broke through. So I would look to place a stop somewhere around the same zone, right? If you notice, around the 127.616 on here, which was off of his FIB, is a little bit lower down here. Um, six, 127.616. Let's put it down right there, 127. A higher. I'll do it right there. Either way, I would have one of two entries. I would have one of mine being at previous support, or I'd have one being on the, off of a FIB level. Either way, both of these are pretty good levels of support that price is respected before. So if it breaks at once, that's you could more than likely write this on the way down. That's what I would look for with DJ at least. What I look for, I place stops. If anything, if I were to take your analysis blindly, I confirm it real quick. I look at the overall trend. Does it respect it? Yep. Does it, is it going on the same type of trend? Yep. All right. I got, if I didn't get the same entry that they did, I'm going to place the leader. I'm going to look either place a limit or a stop. So you guys need to learn how to use those too. So I place a stop somewhere up here or I place a stop somewhere right here. Okay. I'm good. Everybody got that? Yes, no, maybe so. Brian said yes. But if anything, I'm gonna cover I'm gonna cover Keith's Rankos really quick. Uh because he also did EJ and then my EJ looks very similar. Cool, everybody's getting it. everybody's getting it. I love it. Love it. All right. Last thing. Oh, Karim, oh, if you guys haven't noticed, um I actually have to update the the pivot. I mean the goat chat, not the pivot. The pip, uh, the go chat, fucking um, with the analysis that Karim literally just posted this right now on the daily. This is his EJ right now. So this is another um, you know type of analysis that he's looking at on a bigger time frame. The previous chart he posted was a four hour. So he's still looking for the short because it's still respecting this um, this trend line right here, this black one. And like he said right here, 
Uh, I think he actually moved his fibs according to the last picture because the now the 38.2 is at the 127.62. So if you guys uh, did not pay attention to what Jesse was saying, this would be a good idea to put a stop, right? If you're going to put a sell stop. If you guys don't know what a stop and a limit is, you definitely need to learn what that is for sure. Not everything is going to be market execution. Um... So one of the main things is that it's bouncing off that 618 right now. If it stays respecting the 618, then like I said, the negative 27 is ultimately the end goal right there. So look at 123 flat, right? That's where the ultimate end goal. But you can take profits anywhere along those lines, all right? Literally anywhere along these lines is take profits. Just because a Fibonacci ratio has a certain number precisely for a take profit, guys, does not mean you have to use that number exactly. Maybe there's a number in between the 38 and the 23 that you guys want to catch. It's ultimately up to you. Remember, it goes back into your risk appetite and your risk management. As long as you're, you know, like going for double of what you're willing to lose, then you're still in the clear. This is what we're seeing for the EJ on Karim's right now. I'll update the, the chart so everybody can see it on their actual screen. Okay. So this is uh, one of my mentors slash my mentor's mentors. Um, and he covers Renko's. Okay. This is a different type of trading analysis. Okay. Um, you can find Renko's on TradingView, but they're not accurate. Those are what's known as pseudo Renko's. They're not really, they're not really full. They're not, they're not actual Renko's. Okay. This is not based off any time frame. Have you noticed right here? There's no minute 15. There's no four hour or anything like that. This just shows the price being moved. Okay. So no new bar will form if price does not move. Essentially what he's seeing for, for the Renko's right now is that there's a level of support at the 129 flat right here. Right. If you, actually, I'm just noticing right now he also uses quarter levels. So if you guys haven't noticed right here to the right, if you look at his numbers, because they're all flat, such as 132.000, uh, 131.5, 131.25, 131.000, all these numbers indicate that this this person uses quarters theory. Okay. There's obviously a very big level of resistance at the 129 because we can look at previous market structure. Okay. That's somewhere around where the neckline of the double top was formed. Okay. And it's also a previous level of support and resistance if you look back into the past. So even though I'm not going to break down fully how to read Renko charts, because that's like literally a, a whole zoom in itself, I just wanted to let you know that he does see some upwards momentum before the drop actually happens on EJ. So if you didn't enter now, that's perfectly okay. You're going to wait for probably a little bit of a pullback. At most, probably like 128.75 or 129, and then it should drop from there. Uh, don't take my word for it, though. That's why we got to use stop losses. I'm not, I'm not uh, predicting here. I'm just trying to react to what I'm seeing on these charts. Remember that that's what you guys are doing. Okay. Now to go into my actual charts itself. Now this is my EJ right now. If you guys see right here, like I said, we don't always win. Uh, my blue box, my blue circles indicate that I took a position and I got it correctly. I put a red circle. It usually indicates that I did it wrong. I sold here and I was very wrong for it, as you guys can see. Luckily, my stop loss was at previous market structure, so I only took a loss of like about 120 pips. It's not too bad for my account size with my lot sizes and stuff like that. So some people can't take 120 pip loss. Um, I don't know, actually, I talked about it in the group chat too. I told you guys I took the loss last week. So let's delete that first and foremost. Delete all my position. One of the main things that like people are saying right now is that like remember what I said about the 129. So. Um, this was obviously posted before um, it hit the 129, but like I said, it hit the 129. My major key level is at 129. So now what I'm looking for is that I'm looking for um, either if it's going to be continued to be supported at the major key or if it's going to be resisted at the major key. Okay, so let me get a line out here real quick. Previous level of market structure. Right above there. Okay, so if you notice it's got supported, got supported, supported, resisted, and so now I'm seeing if this is going to be resistance. This is about the 123.35, I mean 129.35, 129.5 area, somewhere around there. Um, this goes into actual hesitation zones, which is something about quarters theory that also helps. It's currently breaking out of it. If anything, I see EJ having a little bit more bullish momentum before the drop. But like I said, I'm going to wait. I want to see a four-hour candle, right? I want to see these four-hour candles continue to break and close below. I want to see it to stay below this white line that I've drawn out over here. So if we see more candles doing that for me, then my confluence of it going down is further confirmed. 
All right, so this is something that a call levels is useful for. If you guys don't have it already, it's an app, call levels. It's that way you can get uh, a notification on your phone when price gets hit by a certain currency pair. Download call levels, guys. You'll thank me later. Download call levels, guys, because not everyone has the, the full version of TradingView, and you want to be able to see when, you know, when markets go to a certain price without having to be on your charts 24-7. That's what I use. Same, same. I just started recently using it too because I'm trying to be off the charts more. I make you uh, over trade over trading is a very big thing, guys. You know what? Not every trading day is a trading day. No, trust me. We we uh, everybody goes through when you do when you start trading. You literally want to. Uh, we'd be on zooms and I'd be staring at the minute chart all night. So I was just crazy. You know, like it just it always happens to people. Ooh, plot twist though. We we saw NZD as a short, and David just saw NZD as long. Trading on Monday, on a Monday be like. Market makers. I, I, gotta, I have to perfect that method. I have to perfect market maker method. I'll do, once I perfect market maker method, guys, I'll start teaching you guys. Yeah. It's really it's good at that. Oh, yeah, I said tip it because I read your name out loud, AP. <laughs> $5 a month, very useful. $5 per month for call levels or trading view? Call levels. Call levels is $5 per month? Not bad. Mm-hmm. Got it, got it. Okay. So ultimately, like I said, I do, I, I do think that EJ should go down because overall the trend is downtrending. Like well, I'm, it's been going up for way too long. It has been going up way too long. Do you guys agree? When stuff goes up way too long, it must come down. I'm such an ass. <laughs> you love saying that, even though I feel like nobody said that in like weeks ever since we started making fun of them for saying it. So like. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna keep on saying it until I like that. Just never becomes a confluence again. Trading view is fourteen dollars. Ah, wait. You bought Trading View? I have the free version, guys. Yeah, same here. You don't need to buy everything that goes up. Will eventually come down. Everybody loves that one. So yeah, ultimately, my whole thing. I'm gonna extend out this trend line. If anything, too. I'm looking for that to be retested and rejected. Right. If it breaks through this level of support, I mean, this level of resistance up here, guys. I'm looking for the retest and the rejection, hopefully. Something like that. And then maybe the actual move downwards. So obviously this is where most of it goes. All right, so this is something that I would generally want to see here on EJ. All right, which is why I don't always want to take trades. Sometimes, like you notice, like EJ, like a couple people said it's already tanking. A couple people said it's going to go up before it goes down. That's why we, that's why we wait we react. All right, I'm not going to jump in right now. Market's just opened like 17 minutes ago. It's probably some trash ass setups right now. Um, not really looking, not really looking to it. Well, let me see one more thing on the chat box. AP stop. Let's not have that combo again. <laughs> yeah, Arthur told me you guys have had that combo before. That's funny. All right, so everybody see what I'm seeing on EJ though. At the break of the channel, the retest, that was a beautiful short entry. We would have taken profits 250 pips away. Actually, about 286. Because I take it from key level to key level, guys. So if this continues to be shorted, you already know what I'm aiming for. Another 280. Whether it take a week or two, that's fine. I'm a swing trader. I'm okay with holding stuff over the weekend. I held GU over the weekend. It's the only pair I held over the weekend, actually. CAD, CHF. No, no, no. We're not. We're, I'm not covering CAD, CHF. Um, we're just kind of covering some of the stuff on the on the goat chat, like all of these, all of these analysis right here. Not has been marking up the CAD. Oh my god. I'm not big on CAD to be real. I do CAD sparingly. I do USD CAD and I do AUD CAD. I already gave my AUD CAD analysis too. So, um, CHF, JP, CAD. It don't. It don't treat me well. I'm not going to lie, guys, even though, even if you guys, I mean, you should generally have a better idea of how to read these charts now that we've broken it down. Uh, most, if not all of these charts that we've posted on the GOAT chat, I kind of agree with. I'm not even going to lie to you. Uh, most of the analysis, I what? I agree with them, too. Right? So, like, the USD JPY uh, is bull. I, I agree. USD CAD, bull. I also agree. I think the DXY is bullish. That was one of the main things. So, if you see any of these USD pairs, right? Notice how we said everything with the USD in the front is going up, right? Me and David Schenkel both agreed on that. 
and anything with a USD in the back of it is going down. Jesse said it, Karim has said it, I said it, Ash has said it. Uh, let's see who else mentioned a USD pair. Those are the main people that mentioned USD pairs. Um, I put Belgian Pips, he put CHF, JPY. If you guys, um, what's it called, AP, you didn't, you didn't actually hop on when we mentioned it, but me and Jesse both came to the conclusion that we agree with your CHF, JPY. We see what you see. It's going to be fire. It's a good sell opportunity, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, that was a really fire one, actually. You know me? We see that, too. We're right there with you, dog. So get ready. We shorten that bit. Um, and let's see. So, yeah. So if you guys uh, – let me see. Did I cover – oh, yeah. So ultimately, that's my whole thing on EJ. Jesse kind of agrees with me on EJ. We're looking for short opportunities on EJ, guys. So, like, let's not try to buy here unless you guys are, like, you know, the king of riding pullbacks or something like that. That's fine. That's really hard to do. I don't know. It is really hard. It comes, it comes with confidence and experience. There's nothing wrong with writing pullbacks. You know what I'm saying? Even like Jesse does it sometimes, and it, it still shocks me. And I just be like, yo, teach me your way. Send me a signal. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just like I said, it comes with confidence. comes with experience. You just got to catch it at the right time. It's all about patience. And, uh, and you guys got this. No, catching pullbacks is really, really freaking hard. Don't, like, don't even – I would, I would recommend trying it on demo for a few weeks before you try to do it on your live account. Let's not waste any real money, guys. All right, so uh, besides EJ, um, does anybody have any questions before we end the Zoom? We've already been on here for two hours with you guys. We covered uh, a lot of the charts on the GOAT chat. We covered some stuff that you guys asked specifically for. Uh, where can we buy patients? Um, I found some in the store of spirits. So if you guys know where to, if you guys know what website the store of spirits is at, you know what I'm saying? Meditation.com. Patience, free from Lucas. Well, dude, I don't know, but if you find some gift from me. Personaldevelopment.com, bro. Personaldevelopment.com. You got to go through the tab that says patience, and then uh, you have to buy some for stressed out all the time every month. That's the monthly payment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, besides where, where can you buy patience? Anybody have any, any questions before we wrap it up here? It's already all of you guys that are in IML still, I would highly recommend jump on Kim Torres's IML TV session, 7 p.m. I will always recommend jumping on those. You will find me on there, okay? I will be there. Um, but, yeah, her setups are pretty key, too. I love taking her setup. I don't really take them, but I, I like looking at her setups in comparison to everyone else's, too. And just another confirmation, another text that's what you're looking at. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Even though, like how you said, we don't necessarily just straight, straight up take Kim's setups. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to have another confluence of people that you decide, you like you have you know seen to be pretty good traders. So if you guys follow profitable traders besides, you know, the people that we have been able to be blessed with in the group, in the group chat, then, you know, go check out the confluences. Go see if they match up with your analysis, okay? There's nothing wrong with adding – uh, somebody who you think is experienced on your confirmation checklist. I mean, don't like bother me and Jesse with a DM every time you have a chart markup because we've already had people that try to do that. Um, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? If you see that we're posting analysis for EJ short and you guys are buying EJ, then obviously that's something that's not going to match up. Take your trade if you feel comfortable with yours more than ours. But ultimately, just more, more confirmations, the better. Yeah. And and I'll post the Zoom link on um, the chat um, at 7. So I'll see you guys on there. Yes, we'll post the Zoom link at, at 7. Um, we'll also, this is recorded, so we're going to be uploading this to our YouTubes, both his and our and mine. So if you, didn't, if you didn't catch it on his, you'll catch it on mine. If you follow both of us, then you'll win double as much. And, uh, yeah, if there are no questions, we're going to let you guys go. And we'll probably see you on Kim's IML TV session or Zoom session later on this evening. Oh, it's 7 p.m. PST, 10 p.m. EST. So if you guys over here in uh, Florida or on the East Coast, 10 p.m., what's my YouTube? I will drop the YouTube link for you, Marisol. I got you. Uh, drop one if you got value. <laughs> drop one, one, one if you guys got some value. Hell yeah. Thank you, Arthur. I got value from you. I did too. I learned from Jesse. I learned from Karim. You learned from nobody except yourself. Dakota taught himself how to trade, guys. <laughs> Well, actually, Stanley came over like two or three times to my house. I saw him mark up a couple charts, and I was like, that's it. I'm doing that. I'm just – I'm going to copy what that guy did. Straight up. Like, look, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, my first couple of weeks, I was like – I was not copying and pasting analysis. I was just seeing how he came across a conclusion. So if you guys are just 
sitting here and watching us marking up charts but are not realizing why we're marking it up the way that we are, you literally played yourself. You're watching the YouTubes and the video chats for the wrong reasons. You need to understand why we mark up stuff the way that we do. So when you go on your pair, even though it may not look like a mirror image, you guys are marking up similarly things. You guys need to mark up things properly. Learn your, you know what I'm saying, where you place your trend lines, all that stuff. So I remember where you are, his place teaching key levels. Hi. Thanks yeah, so much. You guys ask, I don't trade, okay? I don't know how to trade, so. Yeah, we're, we're broke and we don't know how to trade when you guys don't ask, but when we post a Zoom link, then yeah, we're for sure, we got you. We'll be traders then, but <laughs> off of the Zoom, we're not traders. Off of the Zoom, we're not traders. I like that. So, um, yeah, if there are no more questions, I appreciate everyone that dropped the one. Everyone that stayed on the whole time, I know that we were like uh, originally at like 25, 30 deep, and now we're down to the last 16. Um, so what I like to do at, every t at the end of every Zoom for people who stayed on the whole way, I give people nuggets. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a present for staying on with me right now. See what present can I bless you with today? I'm on a dead leg right now. <laughs> um, let me see. Most of the people will have the, 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 the videos and stuff like that. Does anybody want, let me see. Is this going to be every Sunday at 3 p.m. EST? Yeah. Um, we'll try, yeah. Yeah, we'll generally try to make it every Sunday. If it's not three, it'll be at four. We generally want to mark up charts before markets open so you guys have a good idea of like getting your head in the game. I will let you know about next weekend because Rudy and I are actually making a trip to Rosarito. Ooh, okay. So if anything, I'm actually hosting on loan. I might see if Stanley will hop on or maybe I'll get Karim to host one with me too. We'll see what's going on. Or you could come to Rosarito with me too. I could go to Mexico. You guys are asking me to go to Mexico. That might be a thing. Rudy, so you need to tell me. Let's include him in the group chat. I'll, I'll do it right now for them. <laughs> Rudy already tried to put me in that group chat. Rudy's like, oh, he's trying to get me to go to Mexico and be lit. Um, let me see. Oh, hold on. Let me let me drop the fibs in here. Oh, actually, I'm a, you guys, is everybody here in the baby pips chat? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to flood the go chat with stuff that's not analysis. I don't really want to post a whole bunch of like you know nonsense or beginner stuff in the go chat. We have some very experienced traders, six, seven figure earners that have literally show you withdrawal forms and stuff like that. They're mad legit, and I'm not trying to irritate them with a whole bunch of newbie nonsense. I mean, I'm not trying to dis dis discredit anybody or anything like that. There are no such thing as stupid questions or anything like that. I'm just saying that some of these people have, like, a certain level of, of patience that I'm not trying to test, if you guys get what I'm saying. So you guys haven't gotten into this group chat yet, uh, let me know. Oh, snap. What did I add? So many people? Perfect. Currently creating for me. All right, so I'm going to post – my fifth settings on here and we'll also cover oh, my trading fibs Fib. we can trade there and zoom oh rudy you already know you want me to zoom from freaking from mexico i mean i would be down can you drop the link, please? I'm not. Oh, yeah, of course. Let me get that baby chips chat. Everybody needs to be in the baby chips chat. Yeah, all of you guys need to be on there because I'll probably, if you guys know how I am, I really don't have a set schedule. It's not like I'll tell you guys I train Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays. It's kind of just like, you can ask Dakota whenever I like just kind of feel like it. Like, I'll just randomly post a Zoom. It's random. My man will literally get home. He's like, hey, I just came back from hiking. I'm, ho I'm hosting a Zoom. Let's, mark let's chart up. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Let's, why not? <laughs> so it is pretty random. Yeah, I'll post it all in there. So, yeah, I posted the, the, the Baby Pips um, page on the, um, on the chat box in the Zoom link. So you guys should be able to get access to that. You're welcome, Melissa. Glad to see you on. Um, let me see. Okay, so besides the fib, I'm gonna look for. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give a nug, and I'm gonna drop it in the baby fibs chat for you guys. So I'm gonna just give it to everybody anyway, even if they did hop off the Zoom, just because I don't want to be like, hey, I missed the I missed the nuggets. So no, no one's missing nuggets. All right, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop some some fire stuff in there. Besides the fact that I just gave you guys my Fibonacci retracement. So let me stop the sharing right now. All right, Jesse, you got anything you gotta cover before we end it up? No. No? Anybody have any questions then? Last time for questions. I'll teach you guys how to use indicators another day. Yes. Like all nine or ten of them that I know how to use. 
we'll cover some stuff that like we're still learning how to use too so you guys can see what we're learning i'm learning how to use like a bunch of different indicators like put together and stuff so i'll, I'll keep you guys rope like me posted i've been diving into a lot of like just a lot of trouble you know getting into more trouble with indicators as always and one of the more important things too besides just showing you each all the indicators we're going to teach you a trading strategy to implement some of these indicators so you're not just having like 10 indicators and they're all not aligning you know what i'm saying we have to have matching indicators stuff that aligns with each other you want more confidence yeah. so if you're rsi you're stochastic your wave trend your emas and your hichimoku kinko cloud you're not lining up and guess what you got too many indicators on your charts guys all right so we're yeah. not, so it's super simple and you can only use them in certain combinations okay so we're going to give you perfect strategies that work for some of these indicators we're not going to just teach you everything and not know how to combine it you know yeah, when I mean I know how to use indicators, guys, I would use like seven indicators on my MetaTrader. Like when I first started trading, all I would use were just like, well, aside from all the other stuff, it's like seven indicators. It was nuts. I would like, I mean, so I would write it perfectly, but people could not read my screen to save their life. <laughs> I couldn't even read a screen sometimes. Yeah. Like, I remember the code would be like, what the hell? What am I looking for? Chart, I'd have to ask him to break down. Perfect sell. Perfect sell. Perfect sound was like, I don't see any, I see cover, I don't know what I saw. I saw some messed up stuff. You can't even see the candlesticks as of how many things I had. I'm pretty sure there was one time he straight up eliminated the candlesticks and we were only looking at indicators. I, I wasn't even too sure at that point. I don't doubt it. I used to love indicators, so I'm your go-to if you want some good indicators. I'll show you everything about them. All right, cool. So yeah, I don't seem like anybody got any questions. I hope everybody took a lot of value away from this. It is recorded. It will be put up to YouTube. Um, watch, 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 study, 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 get some chart time, take breaks from your charts. Remember that this is not a get rich quick scheme. You are compounding your skill set just like you're compounding your accounts. Okay, guys. So little percentages gains. If you learn 5% every day, guess what? You doubled your knowledge in a month. Okay. Just like how you double hey, Chris said. I'm on the chat. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, if you guys were all under me, you guys better come over. Shoot. Straight up. Honestly, I'm going to be very surprised because it's not going to just be Forex and crypto education, guys. I want you guys to know. I mean, just like on a second. Oh, I'm going to teach you guys how to flip some, like make some real big boy money. I'm going to stop recording this because I'm not trying.